argument. The following is a Dallin Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio. Coverage of Dallin Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, r r Realty Group, Mercy One, Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Tamiya and Sons. Thank you for supporting Dallin Catholic basketball on Iowa Catholic Radio. 11.50 a.m., 88.5 f.m., 94.5 f.m., streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Welcome to the Dowling Catholic High School Gymnasium as we get set for girls and boys basketball tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. It's Dowling and Ames, the game that's being made up from last Friday night's snowstorm. They're making it up tonight on this Martin Luther King Day as we're live from the Dowling Gym. Glad you could join us. A little bit of a late start as the JV game just got over with the Dowling JV girls defeated Ames in a very close contest, a game that went a little longer than, uh, probably about 20 minutes longer than expected, but... Uh, we're going to tip this one off here in about uh, about 13 minutes, according to the clock. So we'll give you the pregame show here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Emmadil joined by Steve Devinney. Jeff Pickett is our studio producer. Mr. Devinney, welcome. I see you uh, survived snowstorm number two this past weekend with a little bit of ice thrown in for, for good measure, Steve. Well, and now the penance is that i got to hang out with you for three out of the next four nights. Yes, it is. Isn't that amazing? Three <laughs> out of the next four nights, you and I and Swaim. Unbelievable. And, of course, Swaim's got something going on tonight. He wants me to keep him posted about fourth quarter. i got to let him know when we start there, so yeah. remind me. But, uh, hey, thanks for uh, hanging on. I know you've been busy this weekend following the uh, the Dowling boys uh, youth schedule, the 7th uh, and 8th grade boys. And we got snowed out. You did get snowed out. I was going to yeah. add, the week before you got two of the three in. Yeah. And, and then the Dowling placement test for the ninth grade kids was canceled for the second week in a row. For the There's, second week in a row. Yeah. Imagine that. Peppy. This is the guy I, that got us behind tonight, Mr. Petmeyer. I witnessed this. You need to call 40 fouls in a JV game? I mean, gee. <laughs> <laughs> is this mic on? the first quarter, they didn't foul. It was 6-2 to two aims. Nobody could make a shot. And then what happened? All of a sudden, they decided to get aggressive, and they just keep bumping and pushing. You know, when there. you don't have a chance for the ball, wouldn't you say? Oh, there you yeah. go, Steve. There's our explanation. Mr. Dennis. Live on the radio, by the way. Dennis Petmeyer. <laughs> Dennis Petmeyer. Hall of Famer. We are 20 minutes behind to start the varsity you, game. <laughs> what a, I'll tell you what. They called him out of the retirement home yeah. and, uh, to do this. Because I was going to say. Denny was retired, and I had to use him in softball a few times because... <laughs> We're nope. short officials. We need officials. Yeah. Guys nope. like you went into coaching. Nobody better. Nobody. Good man. No. And he did. He did the right thing. But we're behind because of, well, the game went behind. The JV game, low-scoring game. Dowling girls won 39-35, something like that. But uh, back to this game. A lot of games coming up here, Steve. You mentioned three games. And for the Maroons, don't get any easier. It's Ames and Waukee tomorrow night and Johnston on Friday, and that'll be the second time around beginning on Friday for the Dowling uh, girls and boys basketball team as we're halfway through the season right now. Ames comes in tonight's girls contest with a record of 6-5. and five. They're ranked number 12 in Class 5A in the latest girls' union poll that came out yesterday, Joel Sullivan and his crew. They're 2-2 two and two in Central Conference play. Dowling is 10-2 and two and ranked third, and they come in with a record of 4-1, and one. and I know we have a coach out uh, west listening. Matter of fact, he'll be in our gym tomorrow. Coach guests, and I can give him a little bit of a scouting report. Ella McVeigh is out for Dowling. Hamstring injury, she could be out anywhere from two days to six weeks, according to the Dowling trainer. So uh, Meg Simplot will get the start, uh, 5'7 senior in that spot. So big change for a big, uh, a, a gr- big schedule right now for Dowling, and Maroons without one of their starters in McVeigh tonight, Steve. I would think that this would have to be uh, the Dowling girls' toughest week mm-hmm. of the season. Three opponents that are all uh, very, very good, experienced players, great coaches, and uh, they'll have their hands full all week. Yes, yeah, the Maroons take on fifth-ranked Waukee, and girls play tomorrow night, second-ranked Johnson on Friday. Next week, uh, they'll have road games at East. That'll be a girls only uh, next Tuesday, January 28th. And uh, that Friday, they take on, they travel to 10th-ranked Centennial before taking on number one City High of Iowa City in Iowa City on Saturday, February 1st. That'll be a 2.30 start there in Iowa City. So that's the Dowling's girls' schedule coming up. And then for the Ames Little Cyclones, tomorrow night they're home against Hoover. 
And then on Friday, they travel to 10th ranked Centennial for girls and boys doubleheaded. And they have their makeup game at Johnson next Monday, a week from tonight on January 27th. The next night, they come back to Des Moines, actually in West Des Moines, and take on 15th ranked Valley in a girl boy doubleheader. So next week for, for Ames, it's Johnston Valley. And then Friday, they finish off at home against Ankeny. So either team in the CIML, it's almost like a mini regional or state tournament, Steve, as we know. And, uh, oh, Mr. Guest is listening because he just responded. And uh, <laughs> Tell him to make sure he gets that laundry folded and put back where it belongs. <laughs> well, they closed the VFW during the week there in Van Meter. I mean, uh, rural walkie. And uh, so he is stuck at home doing that. So it's good for him. Great guy. I, yeah. we, we love we love Chris. and A good coach and, a, and even a better husband. Well, a, a good coach, and we'll just leave it at that. And, <laughs> and that's the, the proofs in the pudding. And we're looking forward to tomorrow night's game. We'll have a lot of fun. But not too bad of a crowd here as Dowling and Ames getting in their warm-ups as we were late due to the uh, – well, one of the officials even came on air and told us why they were late. Called a lot of fouls in the second, third, and fourth quarters. And the veteran, Mr. Denny Petmeyer, Urbandale's finest, the uh, we never get an f- official's perspective on things, uh, unless you or I start going off on something. But. Well, no. I mean, they they have to justify what they were trying to do out there. Yep, they were, And there was a lot of fouls called. Yep. That's that poor defense. When you have fouls, it's poor defense. So it's going to happen. So Dowling comes into this game and girls play. They've won six of the last seven games. They've won four in a row with uh, wins over 10th-ranked Centennial. They beat number one Bennett Academy out of uh, Chicago, uh, number nine Urbandale, and then uh, last Tuesday night, defeating Ankeny 77-27 in a game that was over with before the half here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Uh, for the Ames Little Cyclones and head coach Joel Sullivan in his 19th season at Ames, uh, they've lost three of the last four games. They have uh, they did beat Ankeny uh, at Ankeny back on uh, coming out of the Christmas and New Year's break up in Ankeny 56-48, but then they lost to number six Southeast Polk by nine and uh, lost to number nine Urbandale by 13 and they come in uh, losing two in a row uh, due to the uh, uh, the weather uh, snowing out or weathering out uh, some of their games uh, as they are coming off a loss uh, at home to Urbandale by 13 last Tuesday so both teams not playing since last Tuesday and of course we mentioned the McVeigh injury for Dowling Ella injured her hamstring and during Thursday's practice and that is uh, a type of injury, according to Del Arc, you can be either out uh, two days or six weeks. It's that type of hamstring injury. So, Ellen McVeigh will be on the shelf, and we got to think it would be most of this week. So, the Maroons will have to find somebody else. And the next man in, as you know, Steve, you got to put the next person in. Tonight it's Meg Simplot uh, coming off the bench and getting the start for Dowling. Yeah, good opportunity for Meg. Obviously, the team's going to miss uh, Ella. She's been shooting very well. She's super, super quick out there, great defender. And uh, so, like you say, not everybody stays healthy the entire season. We don't know how long she's going to be out, but uh, Maroons will have to just uh, step up and make do. Certainly is. Now, there is a uh, another game going on in the uh, CIML tonight. It is a makeup game up in Ankeny, the Battle of Ankeny. The Ankeny Hawks travel across town to take on Centennial. Girls game started at 530, and they were at halftime last I checked. I'm going to check one more time to see if there is an updated score. And I forgot which one of these uh, Twitter accounts had it, but... Uh, it was Centennial leading Ankeny 25-13 at halftime in the girls' game. Of course, the boys' game will probably tip off right around 7 o'clock. So uh, one of the games tonight in the CIML. Tomorrow night, a full schedule, and we'll uh, we'll bring you that because uh, we'll, we'll be on all three nights this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Steve, we might have to consider this a full-time job with I was gonna three say. out of the five days occupied. Jeez. Well, it's fun. <laughs> it is. And uh, competition all week is good, so. It should be really exciting for uh, fans to come out and watch. Ashworth Vision Clinic, construction professionals, dental associates, and Kemen, some of our sponsors, along with uh, R&R Realty Group, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Two River Glass and Door, and Mercy One. Again, we're live at the Dowling Gym tonight. It's Dowling and Ames. Game one is a girls' game. We'll have the boys' game, obviously, to follow here on Iowa Catholic Radio, along with Steve Devenny. Our studio producer is Jeff Piggott. I'm Mark Emmerdale, back with more pregame. We'll have the starting lineups coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio. 
Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. Welcome back to the Dowling Gym tonight here in Iowa Catholic Raiders. Bring you girls and boys basketball. Ames at Dowling, the first of two meetings between these two clubs as uh, Dowling and Ames will hook up later in the season up in Ames, and we'll have that uh, rematch, so to speak, uh, Steve Devaney, as uh, the Maroons and Ames will play on Friday, February 14th. And how convenient, Valentine's Day night. And they schedule a CIML Friday night game. And Valentine's Day on hey. a Friday, yeah, that'll give me a lot more hot water than I'm in now. Bring your uh, bring your wife and bring some flowers and mm-hmm. maybe buy her some popcorn. Let her sit behind the, the radio booth. She call, should be happy. Call date night. <laughs> Worse for the Devaney family, I understand. I don't know about that. <laughs> but. Hey, how about uh, Tom Wilson coming by when we were on break and kind of promoting that now Super Bowl team that he roots for down south called the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. As they advance to the Super Bowl and take on the San Francisco 49ers in Miami, I think he's got things worked out. He'll stay with former Dowling athletes and uh, Dowling Hall of Famer, actually. Uh, Matthew Hawk, the punter for Miami, he might stay with him down there. But he's looking for three tickets, Steve Devaney. I know you can help him out. You can get him all set up. He's looking for three Super Bowl tickets. I would guess for the nosebleed, we could probably get tickets for 2500 bucks a piece, but... What about I, the, I don't want to be involved in anything illegal with Coach Wilson, so he's on his own. Well, he that. doesn't want to do that either, I don't think. But yeah. I, I was saying, you know, they could set you up outside the stadium in those with those big screen TVs sitting on the veranda yeah, sure. or out in the lawn. You can be close to being yeah. at the Super Bowl and be part of the festivities. But congratulations to Kansas City Chiefs. And, of course, that's not all he said. Something about my L.A., my, my Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders. You don't even know what town they play. Yeah, they've been in L.A., Oakland, and now Vegas. Funny part is I've seen them play in two of those three spots. Well, they haven't been to Vegas yet, right. but they will be. Yep. All right, well, let's take a look, Steve, at our starting lineup tonight. Between Ames, the Little Cyclones, and Dowling in this girls' game, the Ames Little Cyclones come in. Ranked number 12, the record is 6-5. and five. They're 2-2 two and two in conference play out of the Central Conference in CIML. Joel Sullivan, the longtime head coach, 275 wins, 153 losses, assisted by Chuck Stevens and the Michelle, then Michelle Jensen, who played for Iowa State. Now Michelle Graw and uh, Mike Orr are his assistants. And they'll start at one guard, Brooks Spragans. Spragans, a 5'9 junior, averaging four and a half points. So we're number three. The other guard is Caroline, Caroline Waite. Waite, a 5'4 junior, averaging 17 points. And leads the team with 26 steals. So we're number four. Leads the team with 27 made three-pointers also. And the other guard is Morgan Seibert. Seibert, a 5'7 senior, averaging two and a half points. And she'll wear number 11. A one forward, Tegan Lipsy. Tegan, a 5'9 senior, averaging 10.5 points, 8.5 rebounds, and uh, comes in with 21 steals. She'll wear number 22. Her brother, Taman, outstanding sophomore uh, player for Ames. Unfortunately, he's on the shelf this year with a torn ACL. He will not return this season at all. And so Tegan gets to start at forward for Ames. And the final forward is Ashley Iams, 6'1 junior, leads the team with 13 blocks, averaging 15.5 points, 6.5 rebounds and uh, 88% free throw shooter and leads the team with 38 mead, made three-pointers. So for Ames, again, the three guards are Spragans, Waite, and Seibert. The two forwards, Lipsy and Iams. Little Cyclones come in averaging 53.2 points per game offensively and give up defensively 47.1 points per game. Dowling leads the series going back to 2007-2008 year. Uh, Dowling leads the series 12 games to three. Last year, Ames 
losing both games to Dowling. Here at Dowling, 55-48, and at Ames, 51-50. Maroons have won the last three in a row. The last win for Ames came uh, three years ago, a six-point win here at Dowling for the Ames Little Cyclones. So that's the tale of the tape for the Little Cyclones. Now for Dowling Catholic, the head coach is Kristen Meyer in her fourth year, 66 wins, 19 losses here at Dowling, 10 years overall. 167 wins, 64 losses. Dowling ranked number three in Class 5A with a record of 10-2, and two, and they're 4-1 and one in Central Conference play. And Coach Meyer is assisted by Joel Danner, Scott Babinett, Tom Donahue, and Lisa Morrissey-Smith. And the Maroons will start at one guard, Caitlin Clark, a 5'11 senior, averaging 33.5 points, eight rebounds, four assists, leads the team with 43 made three-pointers and 33 steals. Clark will wear number 11. And getting the first, her first start tonight makes Simplot for the injured Ella McVeigh. Simplot, 5'7", senior, averaging three and a half points, three rebounds. She'll wear number 15. And the third guard is Emma Gipple. Gipple, a 5'10", sophomore, averaging five points, four and a half rebounds. And she'll wear number 23. At one forward, Grace Gaber for the Maroons, a 5'11", senior, averaging 10 points, two rebounds. Gaber, second on the team with 31 made three-pointers. And she will wear number 31. And at center for Dowling is Nye Tong. Tong, a 6'1", senior, averaging four and a half points, five rebounds, and she will wear number 45. So, again, for Dowling, it is Clark, Simplot, and Gipple, the three guards, Gaber at forward, and Tong at center. Maroons come in averaging just under 72 points on offense while giving up 51 points on defense. And, again, Dowling is 12-3 and three against Ames in uh, since uh, 2007-2008. Maroons have won three the last three games. We'll take a break and come back with our tip-off. It's Dowling and Ames, but first, a word from uh, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, and our pregame prayer with Father Ryan Andrew here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Hi, this is Dr. Dan Ryan, president of Dowling Catholic High School, and welcome to another season of exciting Dowling High School basketball. We are proud to be partners with Iowa Catholic Radio, not only broadcasting basketball, but also being partners in preparing Christ-centered leaders for life. Go Maroons! Hello, my name is Father Ryan Andrew, and I'm the chaplain at Dowling Catholic High School. Let us pray for the coaches, players, and trainers tonight for this athletic competition. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your gifts. We ask you to bless all those involved in this athletic competition tonight. We ask that you keep them safe, and that they all show good sportsmanship. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. All holy men and women, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. Gymnasium alongside Steve Devinney. I'm Mark Amadell. Jeff Pickett is our studio producer as we get set for girls and boys high school basketball aims at Dowling. And uh, Steve Devinney, we just got done with our national anthem here and pregame prayer at Dowling. And I'll tell you what, it's Tuesday, it's Monday night. It's not Monday night football, it's Monday night basketball. And this is the makeup game, Dowling and Ames. One of two games going on in the CIML tonight as uh, Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial playing in Ankeny tonight at Centennial High School. Centennial leading the girls' game at halftime, but this is the second game, and that's it. Everything else is tomorrow night, Mr. Devinney, and uh, that includes you and me being on on duty two or three games this week here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thanks for joining me, and welcome. It should be a good ball game tonight. I I didn't realize Ames was uh, just 6-5. and They've got a lot of experienced players, and uh, they lack a true post player. The two big kids are 5'9". But uh, the IAMS girls six one and that's, oh, I'm that's, sorry. that's yeah. probably Lipsy's their... five nine. It's said, yeah. Anyhow, good players, and I would yeah, expect she, to be. A... Look how she matches up with yeah. uh, Nye. So it'll be Ashley Ions and Nye Tong. Tong at six one and IAMS at six one. A tip one and controlled by Dowling. So we're underway here, Steve Devaney. Dowling going right to left towards the south basket. Here at the Dowling gym, runs in their home white uniforms with maroon numbers and letters. Ames in their visiting. Orange 
uniforms with black numbers. And now it's a three-pointer by Clark. No good from the right side. The ball slapped around. She gets it back. They give it to her as Simplot feeds her a three-pointer up and good by Caitlin Clark from the right wing and dialing up 3 nothing. And the Maroons with their first to me and Suns three-pointer. Simplot making a nice contribution there with an assist. So we kept the ball alive off the, start, yeah, yeah. off the miss by Clark there, Steve. 3 nothing, Dowling. Little Cyclones have it. As they work their offense, Dowling stays man-to-man. And here's Clark guarding Caroline Waite. Now three-pointer by Ames from the left wing. Up and good by Caroline Waite. All, and for Waite, all five feet four inches of her. Now the Maroons work it inside and score. As we're tied at three, and they work it inside to Nai Tong. The basket is good, and the foul on Ames. This will be on Iams. And on Ashley, that'll be her first. What happened there, Steve? Dallin got the ball down court quickly, and they found uh, Nai Tong underneath. Good post move, and Iams just couldn't contain her. And their free throw up and good. I'll tell you what, Nai's really improved her free throw shooting. She is now 7 of 18 for the season. Came in shooting 35%, but she... Uh, Went one for one in the last game that Dowling played last week against Ankeny. Getting a little more confidence. You can see that at the line, too. No, no question. Six to three, Dowling over Ames. Little Cyclones have it inside to Iams. They get it in the corner to Spragans. She dribble drives. The ball stolen away. Stolen away by Simplot. We called her name twice defensively tonight. Down court it goes to the Maroons and Emma Gipple. Back to Simplot right side. Ames staying man-to-man. Ames has Seibert guarding Clark, and now a three-pointer left wing. It's no good by Simplot. Weak side rebound, Dowling. Gipple with it in the lane. She has a ball stolen away nearly by Spragans, but picked up by the Maroons. Dowling keeps alive. Clark on the baseline loses out of bounds, and they say it went off of Ames. It's nice help defense that time by the little Cyclones. Good pass in the post by Gipp, and, and uh, uncharacteristically, uh, Caitlin just couldn't handle it. That was Seibert helping off, helping out, rather. On Clark, and now Seibert will guard Caitlin. Clark, step back from the right elbow, up and good. Oh, beautiful move, right right the up and over Seibert. little mid-range jumper, a lost art, but Caitlin has a very good uh, mid-range game. Five points for Clark, and Clark now picking up the foul. That's Caitlin's first as Ames dribbling down court. Caroline Waite is being guarded by Caitlin Clark, and Clark with the foul. Eight to three, Dowling, the room's... Lead by five. This is their largest lead of the game. Underway, 545 remaining first quarter. Here at the Dowling Gym, Ames with the basketball. They go left to right towards the north basket here at Dowling. Going up against Dowling's man-to-man. Long three from the left wing. No good by Iams. Weak side rebound comes out to Ames. And a long three coming up and good again. And that is Caroline Waite. She has back-to-back threes for Ames. And it's an 8-6 Dowling lead. She's a believer. Boy, she likes to shoot it. And she's spot up. And now Gaber in the corner for Dowling. Her shot no good from three-point range. And Simplot with the rebound got caught underneath the trees as she was right amongst uh, Iams. And also in there, Kennedy White for Ames. White, a six-foot sophomore or six-foot freshman in there. And Simplot came down amongst the trees and traveled with it. And now underneath, reverse layup no good by Iams, blocked by Nye Tong, rebound Dowling, and now Clark for three in transition, no good. Tong with the rebound, a power dribble to the right side. Her shot up and rolls through. Nye Tong, good offensive board. Five points for nine, Dowling up four. So the little Cyclones in the front court. With it is Lipsy. Now on the right side here is Waite. Waite. Averaging 17 points a contest. Works underneath to Lipsy. It's stolen away by Dowling, and that is Simplot with the steal in the lane. A shot no good by Clark. Gets her own rebound. The put back up and in as she went right around Kennedy White of Ames. So you know, Clark you know what they seven. say, Mark? The uh, shooter is the one who knows where the, the rebound's going to go, right? And she knew. She anticipated where the ball was going to be and went back and got it. Oh, Caitlin went down in the lane and threw some traffic, put it up and left it short, but got her own rebound and went right up without drawing a foul. 12-6 Dowling. Ames with the ball. In the lane, no good with the shot by Lipsy. Rebound Dowling and Clark. Caitlin with it on the right side. Dribbles to the basket. Layup good. They cannot stop her in a timeout hit by head coach Joel Sullivan 
as Caitlin Clark with nine first quarter points. We've got 3.50 remaining here in the first quarter, and this will be a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. Along with Steve Devaney, Mark Hamadale, our score, Dowling 14, aim 6. You're listening to girls basketball in game one of our doubleheader with 3.50 remaining in the first quarter here at the Dowling Gym. Good start for... Uh... Thank you, construction professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Construction professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work. It's beautiful. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. It's a family business built on a strong foundation to create a new or remodeled home that is uniquely yours. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, construction professionals. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Carbaca, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym out of the 30-second timeout. We were fooled. We thought it was a full timeout. It was a 30-second timeout. Ames with the ball and the uh, shot block as Iams got it inside. Other way we go. Dowling with the ball. They had it poked out of bounds. They run the inbounds play, and Clark underneath the right block. She shoots and scores. Boy, she's lived in that right block area, Steve, and Caitlin Clark with 11 points here in the first quarter. As with most other teams that the Maroons play, they don't have an answer for Caitlin. Ames with the ball. Spragans dribbles the basket. Her shot with the left hand good from the left side. Nice drive that time by Brooks Spragans. Yeah, good, first good basket. aggressive move right there. And it's 16-8, to eight, Dowling. Maroons' largest lead was 10. And Spragans answer. Now Clark for three right wing. It's no good. The rebound cleared out of there by Iams. Now in transition, and Ames gets it down court to Spragans. Her shot up and good. The basket will count, and a foul on Dowling. We'll see who this is on. Simplot, I believe. I think they are going to call it on Meg Simplot. Her first, second team foul on Dowling. Ames with two fouls. And the basket good by Spragans, who now has four points. 16 to 10 is our score. Little Cyclones now will bring in. Bring Seibert back into the contest. Ireland bus for Ames, Little Cyclones. First time for her, number zero. And the Maroons have three subs in. Rodriguez, Julia Moore, and uh, Lexi Bowles. So two guards and a post player. Nai Tong sits out, and a free throw is good by Spragans. 16-11. Dowling with the lead over Ames. Maroons in the front court with three new ball players. They're working inside to Clark, left elbow, guarded by Spragans. Now she brings her back out beyond the three-point. Now we got a five-second call called on uh, Clark as she held the ball in a five-second closely guarded call. And, uh, she was giving us her best uh, James Harden impersonation, <laughs> just pounding it out front. So, uh, Muhammad Abdullah, one of our officials, I saw him with the count, and it got the five. Dylan Dinkla and Gregory Barord are our three officials. Muhammad Abdullah, Dylan Dinkla, and Greg Barord, our three-person officiating crew. And good job by Muhammad Abdullah. He got Caitlin for a five. And now a long three up and good by Caroline Waite. That's her third of the night, her 30th of the year. And she has nine of Ames' 14 from the top of the key, Steve. Boy, she's on fire early, isn't she? 16-14, Dowling by two. And now Gippel for three, good from the left wing. Emma Gippel with her sixth three of the year. Turning into a shootout here. To me and Sons three-pointer. To me and Sons, 1501 Southeast First Street. They're our three-point basket supporter. I want to thank them, Mario, Joe, Joe Jr., and Louie down at 1501 Southeast First. 515-282-7976. Give them a call and put it on Coach Guess's bill. He'll pay it tomorrow night (laughs) when he's here. All right, Ames with the basketball. They're running a little bit of their offense. They get it inside to Spragans. That's poked away. And that's Julia Moore that forced the steal. Now Clark with it. Left elbow in transition. Her shot no good. Rebound Dowling. Moore with it. Goes right around the defender. Her layup up and good. And she went right around Caroline Waite. 
I thought she was going to pitch it back out and get something started again, but uh, so went, went hard to her left and uh, finished. Julia Moore, the 5-4 freshman, shoots and scores. Now Ames in the lane. A shot no good by Waite. That was uh, too close because she's used to hitting those threes, and Waite got a little three-footer on the left block that couldn't get it to fall. In, the, in the, the land of the Giants, Mark. Yeah. I mean, she's five. What'd she say? Five four. Five four. Yeah. And now Dowling That's with the generous. Re- Dowling with the rebound. Possession arrow favors Ames. Twenty seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's Dowling twenty-one. Ames fourteen. Here on Iowa Catholic Radio, Mark Amadale, Steve Davini. The Maroons are going to hold for the last shot. Apparently, at least trying to. Spragans guarding Clark, and they're trying to deny her the ball. Now she has it. Left wing. Clark step back three. Left wing up. Good. Right in front of Coach Sullivan, and that'll end the first quarter of play. Dowling's lead is now 10, 24-14 and Caitlin Clark with her 14th point on another to me and Sun Street pointer. We'll take a break and come back. Our score at the end of one quarter of play here at the Dowling Gym. Dowling 24, Ames 14. Back with more girls basketball after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym underway in the second quarter. Dowling and Ames. Dowling with the lead 24-14. Little Cyclones will get the basketball to start the second quarter. They go left to right towards the South basket as we are positioned right behind the scores table here at Dowling. And now a jumper or a layup in the lane, up and good. And that time Caroline Waite hits her first two-point basket. She now has 11 points to lead Ames. And it's 24-16. The other way we go, Dowling pushing it down court, and they draw a foul. Fouls on Morgan Seibert, her first. And team foul number three on the uh, Little Cyclones. And the Maroons will inbound the ball. It's Clark, Nighton, Clark for three, and it's good from just to the left of the top of the key. To me in Sun Street Pointer for Caitlin Clark. She now has 17 points. That is her third three of the night. Ames with the basketball down court. Lipsy down the right side. Tried to make a cross the court pass. Couldn't get it done. And it's stolen away by Dowling. Clark with it. Now she launches the three. The ball goes out of bounds. And It'll be Dowling basketball, and as Clark's three-pointer was no good from the right wing, Steve, it went out of bounds to the uh, off to the left baseline. And yeah, Coach, rule Coach Sullivan thought that maybe her his girl got pushed. And I thought so, too, but no yeah. call by the official, so it'll be Dowling basketball. Now they'll play it. Brianna Rodriguez, Clark, Tong. Also in there is Julia Moore now traveling on Clark. She took that one extra step. Caitlin also thought she got bumped. And Grace Gaber, the five on the floor for Dowling. We'll catch Ames line up here. Julia Graw in there for Ames, number 33, to start the second quarter, along with Ashley Iams. And now here is Wait for three. It's no good. Rebound comes out to Dowling. Also in there for Ames, Brooks Spragans. As Gaber for three in the left wing in transition. It's no good. Fight for the rebound and coming away with it is Graw for little Cyclones. Uh, Iams dribbles in the front court, goes down down the lane against uh, Gaber and Grob, or rather, uh, Iams makes a pass and knocked out of bounds by Nai Tong. Good defense by the Maroons that time, Steve. Yep, Nai, Nai hopped up in the passing lane. Rodriguez will check out for Dowling and re entering the ball game for the Maroons will be Meg Simplot. Again, Meg Simplot got the start tonight. If you joined us late, Ellen McVeigh out with a hamstring injury that 
Could last anywhere from two days to six weeks, according to Del Lark. So she is rehabbing that with treatment twice a day. And Ella in street clothes tonight, sitting next to head coach Kristen Meyer on the Dowling bench. 6.20 remaining, second quarter. It's Dowling 27, aim 16 on Iowa Catholic Radio. Here's Waite down the lane, and she draws the foul before the shot. And we'll see the foul beyond Dowling, and this will be on Julia Moore, her first. Yeah, Caroline Waite, boy, she's aggressive. She's trying to get north and south and a good outside shooter. So yes, she is. One of the having a good game. Smallest gals in the, on the floor. Now getting loose and getting the layup is Brooks Spragans. Spragans with her seventh point. She's also got a, a good first step, doesn't she? She does. Brooke, a 5'9 junior, takes the ball at the right elbow and goes right down the right side, layup. And Ames now has cut the Dowling lead to nine. Six, under six minutes remaining. Here's Clark with it coming off a ball screen. Lobs underneath to Nye Tonk. She can't handle the pass. Saves it to Moore. To Gaber for three. It missed everything. Loose ball coming uh, coming away with it is Dowling. And now Clark will direct traffic from the right baseline. Clark going against Spragans. Puts up a shot. It's no good. Ball tipped out of bounds. They say it went off a Nye Tong as she was battling in there with Morgan Seibert of Ames. So it'll be Ames basketball. Nightong now will check out for Dowling. Bowles in. So it's Bowles, Gaber, and Simplot, along with Julia Moore and Clark. The five on the floor for Dowling. Ames with it. This is Brooks Spragans with it. Gets it underneath the lip seat. Turnaround shot in the lane. A foul called on Dowling. This will be on Bowles. Fans thought Bowles got a, had a block, and it was actually a real good a foul called. That will be Lexi's first. And free throws coming for Ames. Tegan Lipsy looking for her first points of the night. Tegan, a 5'9 senior, averaging 10.5 points, 8.5 rebounds. And her first free throw is good. A 69% free throw shooter on the year. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, and Ashler Vision Clinic. Steve Devinney, your thoughts thus far processing Good competitive all this. game. Yeah, I mean, both teams are aggressive. The Maroons have had a little bit of a rough start here to the start of the second quarter. Only uh, one made basket was uh, Caitlin Clark's three. Okay. Well, she makes them both. Does Lipsy. That's her first two points of the night. 27-20, Dowling by seven. Maroons have led by as many as ten. That was at the end of the first quarter. Now in the lane. Bowles with a shot off the glass. Good. As she went right around Tegan Lipsy. Yeah. So, Tegan at 5-9. That's a tough matchup for her. And Lexi was able to go right over the top of her. Ames with the basketball, trailing by nine. A little dribble handoff. This is Lipsy down the lane. She goes, off, shot off the glass. Good. Foul on Dowling. The basket will count. And Lipsy with a nice move in basket. And they're going to get the foul on Bowles. So Lipsy with her fourth point. Bowles with her second foul. And we may see Nai Tong check in as Coach Meyer says, yes, please do. You Carolyn. must have been uh, reading her mind, Mark. As I don't know about that, but uh, Carolyn Wade also returns for Ames. She replaces Morgan Seibert. We will check out. And free throw now by Lipsy is up and no good. Rebound Dowling and Gipple. So under five minutes to play here in the second quarter, 29-22. Dowling with the lead over Ames. The first of three games this week here. On Iowa Catholic Radio and all at the Dowling Gym as Runes playing Friday night's rescheduled game tonight against Ames. Tomorrow night's regular scheduled game is Waukee here at Dowling. And on Friday, back to conference play, Dowling and Johnson here at the Dowling Gym. So, Steve, you'll have the same seat all three nights as a pull-up jumper. Good by Meg Simplot just inside the three-point line on the left wing. Nice, Nice to see her knock one down there. Simplot getting a start tonight for McVeigh. 31-22, Dowling by nine. Now in the lane, Lipsy, her shot no good. Battle for the rebound, a whistle and a foul on Dowling on the rebound. And Lipsy now bringing it here in the second quarter. Fouls on Simplot, her second. 14 foul, or rather 15 foul on Dowling. Might be sixth, Mark. Yep. Three, are, three on Ames. Five on Dowling, three on Ames. Now here's a steal by Gipple. She tries to get it down court to Simplot. It's stolen away by Ames. Now a three-pointer up and good as Ames makes him pay. Ames for three. 
over from the left wing after that flurry there. Yeah, three of these kids play year-round for the All-Iowa attack. Ashley Imes is one of them, and she can shoot it. Here's Clark. Fall away jumper good just inside the three-point line. Left wing. So Clark with her 19th point. Quick answer by Caitlin. 33-25, Dowling by eight. Ames with the basketball. Here's Waite, guarded in the left block, and now we got a timeout. He said it twice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Joel wanted to take that back. Head coach uh, Joel Sullivan of Ames yeah. does call a timeout. We'll keep it here. It's a 32nd timeout. Dowling 33, Ames 25. Ames will have the ball. And so inbound the ball at half court across from us. Mark Hammondale, Steve Davini. Nice ball game here, Steve. On <laughs> Action's fast and furious. It is. A lot of shots being put up. Yeah. How many three-point baskets? One, two, three, four. You're counting. You're counting. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine made threes by combination. Both teams. So some pretty good shooting going on. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, Try to get you a score up from Ankeny. The only other game going on tonight is Ankeny and Centennial playing at the Centennial Gym. And we'll get you a score when we can. Here it's 33-25, Dowling Girls leading Ames here in the second quarter. At halftime, we'll have Michael Connor, the Dowling Boys head basketball coach, talking about his game tonight with Ames, the first of two against the Little Cyclones. Dowling and Ames in the same conference. So they play each other twice in basketball. Also in that uh, central division includes uh, Johnson, Urbandale, Centennial, and Ankeny. Now in the lane, Iams with the shot, no good. Ball is slapped out of bounds. And it'll be Dowling basketball. So the Maroons will dribble up across the timeline. Clark. Leaves it for Simplot. Now Clark on the baseline with it. Guarded by Iams, and she'll back it out with 2.45 remaining. Dowling by eight and the basketball. The defense by the Little Cyclones. They stay man. In the corner it goes to Simplot, and she travels with the basketball. Walk before she dribbled. As substitution now for Dowling as Julia Moore will check in the lineup, and she'll yep. replace Meg Simplot, Steve. Split that... Uh... Kind of drugged that pivot foot, evidently. Looked like she was going to shoot the three, and then she decided to take it off the dribble. Yeah, I saw that. Last report, Centennial leading Ankeny 25-13 at halftime of the girls' game. We'll try to get an update there. All right, Ames with the basketball. With it is Waite. Caroline Waite puts it over in the corner. And a three-pointer by Iams is good from the left wing. Ashley Iams. Knocking down her second three-pointer of the second quarter. And Clark for three, top of the key, good, with another to me and Suns three-pointer. Caitlin Clark now with her 22nd point as both teams firing up shots. Now backing in is Wade, and she travels with the basketball before the shot. She was looking for contact there, uh, Steve. She backed in near the right block, and the Dowling defender backed off her, and uh, she didn't get a dribble in between snaps. <laughs> Wow. Turned and made the shot, and they wave it off. Good call that time by the official here on the near side. Two minutes remaining. Dowling by eight, 36-28. Moons with the basketball. Clark for three. Right wing. It's no good. Nai Tong with the rebound. Power dribble. Couldn't get the shot off. Leads for Gaber. Top of the key. It's no good. And the rebound cleared out of there and aims with it. Lipsy saves it from going out of bounds. Into the hands of... Timmermans, who's checked in. Madeline Timmermans, number 32. And now Ames in transition. Iams for three. It's no good. Rebound put up and in. No good by weight. The follow through, no good. Lipsy shot, no good. Now they're just playing An old-fashioned game of oh. Annie Annie over. Oh, my goodness. Back and forth. And uh, <laughs> Ames on the <laughs> offensive glass at Four time. times, yeah. Foul on Dowling will be on Nai Tong, her first. I think that puts uh, Ames <laughs> into the into the, the bonus. Be team foul number seven. Bonus. Yeah, team foul number seven on Dowling. Iams will come out for Ames. She's replaced by Brooke Sproggins, who's been out for a little bit. And free throws coming now for Madeline Timmermans. Free throw good. That's Timmermans, believe it or not, first free throw of the night. 
5 of 14 on the year. Make that 7 of 16 on the year. She makes them both. 36-29, Dowling by 7. A minute 24 remaining here in the second quarter. Dowling in the front court. Clark passes on the left wing to Gaber. Now they swing it to the right side to Gipple. To Moore on the baseline, right wing. Right corner, three-point line extended. Now back to Clark. Clark and Moore play catch. Now they get it to Tong, and she's triple teamed. And a reach-in foul called on Ames. I think it'll be on Lipsy, and it is. So Tegan Lipsy picks up the foul. Her first. And the 14 foul that I have on Ames. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Four. So Dowling went down the ball, and they throw it into Clark. With a minute remaining, Dowling by six. Here is Tong at the free throw line. Swings to the left side, Gaber with it. Now they give it to Clark, who's guarded by Seibert. Now step back three, left wing. It's up and no good. Whistle and a foul on Seibert. Her second and three free throws coming for Caitlin Clark here, Steve Devaney. Yeah, Ames bench and, and, and the young lady who the foul was called on. Question that a little bit, but Clark's going to get three from the charity stripe. 49 seconds to go in the half, and the Maroons are trying to build on a six point lead. And the first of three free throws, no good by Caitlin Clark. Comes in with an 81% free throw shooting percentage. Mercy One, we want to thank them along with Two Rivers Glass and Door, RR Realty Group, and Catholic Tuition Organization. We want to thank our supporters. And business underwriters of Iowa Catholic Radio's coverage of Dowling Catholic Sports here in our 43rd year. Mark Amadale, Steve Devaney tonight from the Dowling Gym. Second or third free throw is good. So Clark now with 24 points as she made the second and third free throws there, Steve. Dowling by eight. Ames with the basketball in the front court. Caroline Waite between the circles. Left side, she works it over to Spragans. On the dribble, Lipsy. Lipsy wants to go inside. Now lobs it into White, and she overthrew her. Kennedy White couldn't handle the pass. White, a six-foot freshman in there. Wonder if the Maroons will play just for one here. Last shot, 33 seconds to go up by eight. And possession arrow does favor Ames, so we'll see. Dowling's got to get across half court. They do with 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Dowling 38, Ames 30 here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Game one of our girls and boys doubleheader. Night number one of three this week here in Iowa Catholic Radio. We'll be back tomorrow night as it's Waukee and Dowling in a girls and boys doubleheader. All four teams ranked in the top ten of the respective divisions. Now Gaber for three is blocked by Spragans. Retrieved by Moore to Clark at the horn. No good. Caitlin misses the three, and she had a wide open look as there was kind of a flurry there off that block shot. We go to halftime with Dowling leading here against Ames, 38-30 to 30 over the Ames Little Cyclones here at the Dowling Gym. Steve Devaney, what a first half by the Maroons and Ames. Yeah, real good half. Would have been nice to get that last shot to fall, but uh, leading by eight going in at the break, and... Uh, both teams have played hard both all the whole time so far. So, good ball game. Certainly is. Well, we'll get to our halftime guest as Ames outscored Dowling 16-14 to in the second quarter after Dowling took a 10-point lead in the first quarter, 24-14. Ames comes back and cuts to eight here in this, at halftime. It's Dowling 38, Ames 30 here at halftime. Along with Steve Devaney, I'm Mark Amadale. Coming up, Michael Conner, the Dowling boys basketball coach, will preview the boys game between Dowling and Ames. When we return to the Dowling Gym after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating hey, custom Mark. frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. 
Thank you, r r Realty Group, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. r r Realty Group is an Iowa commercial real estate owner and developer that provides services for all commercial real estate needs, including brokerage, interior space planning, real estate management, construction, and more. r r Realty Group has been accommodating business expansions and real estate solutions since 1985, solving commercial real estate needs. r r Realty Group, establishing long-term relationships built on trust. And welcome back to the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadeo alongside Steve Davini. Joined here at halftime by uh, Michael Connor, the Dowling Boys basketball coach. I don't know if you're, Davini, you're giving a hard time to uh, Mr. O'Connor. Or to uh, Tom Donna, who who's following him in. I don't know what you're up to. No, no, no. We got Mr. O'Connor in the house. John O'Connor, oh. the key to the city, up in Dubuque. Yeah. And we were supposed to have that parade, and that got postponed between uh, for Michael Connor well, and Nick Wagner. Well, that was for Wags. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was for Wags. That's right. All right. <laughs> OC, t- thanks for joining us tonight. How you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you? Good. Another long week, huh? No game Friday night. Uh, extended weekend and. Monday night basketball. Huh? The dog days of basketball season. And I think in the summer, it's late August, and basketball, it's late January, and here we are. Yes, we are. Well, it's Dowling and Ames for the first of two this year. And I know last year you faced Ames twice and competitive games. I know they got you down here. Coach Downs didn't make that game. He had that uh, uh, cornea issue with his eye, and his assistants <laughs> did a nice job handling the team, uh, winning down here last year. But then you go up there and lose in overtime. Uh, in the February game up in Ames. So, but that was with this kid named uh, Lipsy, who is now out for the year. This is a different Ames team without him. And uh, your team's a little bit different than last year, too. So talk about the matchup tonight. First time between Dowling and Ames, and I know you'll get the rematch later. Well, I'd be remiss to say that um, if I didn't mention that the mom kid's not playing either, and he's a really good player. So you can make an argument that two of their most experienced, talented mm-hmm. players are out. So... The fact that Coach Downs has them to, to 500 right now is really a credit to him and the overall depth in the program. Um, like every night is in this league, you've got to show up and you've got to defend and you've got to be efficient on offense. And if you don't do those things, it's going to be really, really tough. And, and tonight's certainly no exception to that. Well, I know, Coach, last time uh, you played, it was against Ankeny last Tuesday. And uh, the Hawks ended up pulling out a four-point win. You had to lead late. But that was a game that was hard to defend because Aim or Ankeny brought so many tools uh, and so many players to the game. It was awesome to watch their guards. And uh, the one young man, Bayless, who didn't play the first meeting, he was a big difference maker. We talked about him. But just defending that type of team, Coach, you don't see that too often in the CIML. No, you don't. Um, and Bayless is really good. Um, two things that I thought were key that night is I, we didn't think that we played to our top effort level in the first 16 minutes of the game. I think you saw a different team in the second half, and that was a valuable lesson for us to learn that you just can't show up, and especially against a good team like that, and expect to have success. You've, you've got to work at it. Um, I, I think amidst Bayless coming back, you lose track of the Manis kid that went 5-for-5 five five from Unbelievable. three. Unbelievable. He was 2-12 of 12 on the year, shooting 16%. He goes 5-for-5. Five five. He, he Bayless, you expect that out of him. Yes. I mean, we, we, we came into the game knowing that no matter what we did, he was going to be efficient. He's just a good player. We didn't expect that out of Manis. And to, to us, that was the big difference in the game. If the Manis kid goes one for five like his average says he's supposed to, uh, it's a different game. So great lesson for us, great experience. Um, that's when you play a good teams like we have on our schedule, you've got to bring it every night. And uh, that was a lesson we had to learn. But uh, we've turned the page, O.C., Yep. That, that was last week, and you don't dwell on your wins, and you're not going to dwell on your losses. But uh, how have the kids responded since? Great. We had two really good days of practice after that. Um, haven't played since then, so it's tough to tell. We'll find out tonight. The one bad thing about not well, a lot of bad things about not playing last week is you could tell that we were motivated on Wednesday and Thursday in practice, and you wait a week, and I don't want to say you lose that edge, but high school kids lose that feeling i mean they're 15 16 17 years old they're gonna they have a short memory which can be good and bad but we reminded of up today and walked through and hopefully you see a little bit more committed team for the entire 32 minutes i thought we were very good the last 16 just that first 16 we we weren't 
up to our normal standards. This is with Michael Connor, the Dowling boys basketball coach. Halftime score of the girls game. Dowling girls lead Ames 38-30. to And OC, as uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, coming off that loss to Ankeny, your second loss of the year. Tonight you'll be past the halfway point of the season, technically, as you play game number 11 uh, and taking on Ames. Now, this is a different Ames team. You talked a little bit about the, what they bring to the table. But I remember this young man, Corey Phillips, brought him up as a sophomore. He's kind of a banger in the middle. He's their second leading uh, scorer, but also their leading rebounder. And then a young man named Kashawn Brooks who stepped up in the place of scoring for uh, Lipsy and uh, averaging 14 points. What do you know about these guys from film? Because you haven't played them yet, but uh, uh, the matchup tonight with Dowling and your size. Uh, both very good players um, that have been forced into greater roles than they were expecting three or four months ago. Sure. Um, if they're healthy, this is a scary Ames team uh, because those two are really, really, really good players. If you had Taman and Mum, it's completely different. Um, Phillips is a banger, like you said, pretty physical, uh, decent away from the basket, gets most of his does most of his work close to the hoops. And the Brooks kid's inside out. He, he re- will remind you a little bit of the guards from Ankeny with the way he plays. Okay. OC, what about uh, the rest of the week then? I mean, you're not lo- obviously not looking past this game, but you got Waukee and then Johnston on Friday. So how do your – how do you guys as a staff even prepare for three in a week? Well, we did some stuff the last couple of days in practice to help us prepare for the next two because we knew that the time between tonight and tomorrow weren't going to be great. So we actually almost treated it like you're playing a double hitter. We're going to practice the next two days for two teams. And thankfully, there's some things that both teams do in terms of their offensive schemes. And, and I think we're going to see some zone both games. So um, that kind of helped us. But not an ideal situation i don't know that what we're doing is a perfect thing it's not an exact science but we've we've prepared for both teams the last couple days in practice and after tonight we'll break this game down and we'll spend some time with the kids before the game tomorrow in waukee and and kind of go from there well nonetheless it's ciml basketball at its best ames waukee and johnson what a week it is and i know next week you only play well one game that's that friday game but uh, so you get kind of a, a reprieve there, Coach. But nonetheless, the kids can't get excited about tonight, tomorrow, and Friday. I don't, I don't know who can. That's exciting. That's exciting basketball. Well, we certainly hope they're excited. You know, you you never know with kids. We we weren't totally excited as a group last Tuesday for whatever reason. <laughs> it's it's tough to tell with young kids. Second and second half, you were excited. They were, yeah. and, and part of that's just it's a long <laughs> season. It's the ups and downs. Um, it's normal. Every team goes through it. That happened to be the game that, that we dealt with it. Was really proud of how we answered in the second half, and hopefully we can learn from that and come out and put 32 minutes together tonight because tonight's the only night that matters. Tomorrow and Friday, we'll deal with those in time, but tonight's sure. really what matters for us. All right, OC. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. I'm, I'm glad to see part of Dubuque is uh, down here watching the game. Your dad, it's always good to see him. That means he's going to have a pretty good breakfast tomorrow morning, uh, yeah. Steve. I mean, OC's got to get him cooking breakfast. Absolutely. Any free breakfast is good breakfast. That's right. <laughs> so that's why he's down here a lot. But uh, the ones that didn't make it from Dubuque will have the game on Iowa yeah, Catholic Radio, and we'll, sure. we'll do our best to up uh, And i got to say hi to my daughter. She's listening at home. Hi, oh, Emily. Very, very she nice. Was, wanted to come, but she's been out late the last couple nights, so they're saving up and hopefully coming tomorrow. But. Hello, Finley. I love you. All right. There you have there you the go, head, Dad. head dog, yep. Michael Connor. OC, thanks. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Michael Connor joined us here Good at halftime of the uh, girls' game. Dowling girls leading 38-30. to 30. We're going to take a break, come back with the start of the second half as the Dowling girls lead Ames. Mark Hamadale, Steve Davini, courtside here at the Dowling Gyms. Jeff Pickett is our studio producer. Back after these messages with the start of the second half of the girls' contest here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you to Tamiya & Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tamiya & Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tamiya & Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tamiya's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tamiya & Sons is located on Southeast 1st Street, just south of downtown Des Moines and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. TamiyaAndSons.net. 
Net. Hello, my friends. Father Wade Menezes here of EWTN's Open Line Tuesday, where topics of faith, family, and fellowship are discussed each week, along with my giving general pastoral advice and catechesis. I'm asking you to faithfully support your local Catholic radio station, help give the Catholic faith to others by promoting solid Catholic programming in your local area. I strongly encourage you to become a faithful steward to your local Catholic radio station. You can give securely online at iowacatholicradio.com, the Iowa Catholic Radio app, or call 515-223-1150. We're back here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadil and Steve Davinius get you caught up with our first half scoring. First of all, for Dowling, the Maroons were led by Caitlin Clark with 24 points in the first half, and she was followed by Nye Tong with five points, three points for Emma Gipple, and two points for Meg Siplot, who got her first start tonight in place of Ella McVeigh, who's injured, and Lexi Bowles with two points for Ames Little Cyclones, Caroline Waite with 11 points. She had three three pointers in that first half for her 11. Seven points for Brooke Spragans. Six points for Ashley Iams. Four points for Tegan Lipsy. And two points for Madeline Timmermans. Little Cyclones were five out of six the free throw line. Dowling gets the ball to start the third quarter. And Steve, what happened? A turnover. Well, uh, Ames came out in a little half court trap that Maroons were not anticipating, so they called a quick 30 second timeout. Play resumed. Nai Tong had the ball in the post and got called for an offensive foul. And now uh, Ames just jacks up a three and misses. And then a rebound comes off to Clark. So Nai Tong with her second foul of the night. And a pull-up jumper no good. Rebound Dowling. Nice hustle that time by the Maroons. And that was Simplot keeping the ball alive. Clark for three. Top of the key. Good. Another to me and Suns three-pointer for Caitlin Clark. She now has 27 points. Bullseye. And keeping that ball alive, Simplot again. Yes, it was. Doing the little things that won't be in the box score. Yeah. But on the scouting report of the coach that's listening tonight out in Van Meter. I think he's got some uh, video production going on here, oh, like, like the Houston always, Astros. I think he's, he's got somebody in the big, gym here tonight. Best in production. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're Facebook and live, I'm sure. He's into that. Now, running jumper in the lane, no good by way. Just off balance, rebound Dowling, and the Maroons get it down court to Gipple. Two on one fast break, and Dowling loses the ball out of bounds. Goodness. Turnover against the Maroons. Yeah. Gip, Gip Moore, probably should have shot that. She was right there, point yep. blank. She tried to give it to Moore, and it was yep. off Noor's knee out of bounds. Oh. And so Ames with the basketball. Inadvertent horn there. Yeah, they let him play, as they say. Maroons with an 11-point lead. 41-30, Dowling over Ames. Six minutes, 15 seconds remaining, third quarter. Ames going right to left towards the south basket here. We're in their road Orange uniforms with black numbers and letters. And now the ball on the floor as Spragans loses the basketball. And a tie-up forced by Nai Tong. It'll be out of bounds to the Little Cyclones as Ireland Bus checks in for the Little Cyclones for Caroline Wade, who might have been shaken up after she took that last shot. Yeah, she went down hard, and she was slow to get back on the defensive end. But uh, looks like she's okay. And she goes to the bench. Coach Sullivan's asking her how she feels. Looks like she's okay. Dowling went three of four at the free throw line in the first half and mentioned Ames five of six at the line. And, and a shot up and good by the little Cyclones. That was Iams. Uh, you don't see that very often. But no, it, was a, don't. Uh, it was a back screen followed by a lob. Alley-oop to Iams. Nice and, play. And she scores. So Iams with her eight point. The other way we go. Dowling with the ball. Clark on the right block. Her shot no good, but she's fouled. That and, was on uh, Spragans. And Spragans with her first foul. And Clark now for two. First one up and good. With 28 points now, making the first of two free throws. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Mercy One, the Catholic tuition organization, along with Two River Glass and Door and r r Realty Group. Second free throw good by Clark. She now has 29 points. Oh, hum, just another 29 for Caitlin, halfway through the third, not even halfway through the third quarter. 43-32, Dowling. Here's Lipsy in the lane. Her shot is no good. Rebound out to Dowling. Here's Clark in transition. Two on uh, one and a layup up and good. Clark pull-up jumper with uh, Nai Tong running the court underneath. Good rebound and outlet by Nai to get that break going in a hurry. Clark with 31 points. 45-32, the Maroons by 13. 
Dowling coming off a 50-point win over Ankeny in their last game about uh, six days ago. Clark for three, top of the key, good. And uh, Coach Sullivan may need a timeout. Caitlin Clark on fire with her 34th. That was from the top of the key, a two-me and Suns three-pointer. Steve? She's feeling it. There's no question about it. There was no intention, not even a thought about passing the ball. She's she's feeling it right now like she gets going once in a while. All right, we'll take a one-minute break. The score, Dowling 48 Ames 32, five minutes remaining, third quarter from the Dowling Gym. Back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym as Caitlin Clark just knocked down her sixth three-pointer of the night. Dowling 48, Ames 32. The Maroons with their largest lead of 16 points now with 4.45 remaining here in the third quarter, Steve. And Coach Sullivan of Ames need to call that timeout. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, t- 10 to 2, Caitlin's outscoring Ames here in the third quarter. Little Cyclones with it. They have Ashley Iams in there along with Brooks Spragans, also in there as Kennedy White for the Little Cyclones. And now Wait for three, top of the key, good. That was a big basket for the Little Cyclones. Caroline Wait with her fourth three of the night. She's got 14 points for the Little Cyclones. Yeah, she's been steady. As you said, pregame, she's their leading scorer, but she's been good. And now Maroons with a three-pointer by Clark, no good, and it's tipped out of bounds off of Ames and Ashley Iams. Another deep three by Caitlin, just off the mark. Well, she is feeling it. When she's feeling it, you're going to see a lot of those shots go up. Six threes on the night for Dowling, for Clark, and seven as a team, as Gipple has a three also. And now the Maroons with it. More on the baseline. Rodriguez for three, and it's off the mark. No good. Nai Tong offensive board. She out-hustled that time. Kennedy White, a three coming. It's no good by Simplot. Ball loose on the floor, and Ames comes away with it. And Lipsy, stolen away by Clark at half court. Clark. Fakes the uh, shot, puts up a running jumper, it's no good, and a whistle and a foul on Ames. And Clark the line for two. Caitlin with the steal, and she acted like she was going to pull up for three on the left wing in transition. She took it to the hole and drew the foul. Foul foul on Ames. That's her second. Team foul number. I think that's the team second, too. I got her for one right now, (laughs) or the team for one. Iams has her second. Clark to the line for two, and her first one is good. Caitlin with her 35th point of the night. Nice game on Iowa Catholic Radio, brought to you in part by construction professionals, Kemen, Dental Associates, and Ashworth Vision Clinic. Alongside Steve Devinney, I'm Mark Amadale. Jeff Pickett is our studio producer. Second free throw no good by Clark. Caitlin with 35 points on the night. Missing her second free throw where she is 5 of 7 at the line. And now a bank shot no good by Iams, rebounded by Dowling, as Bowles in there for Nai Tong. So it's Bowles, Rodriguez, Clark, along with Julia Moore, and Big Simplot. And now a blocking foul as Moore, the freshman, takes it to the hole, draws the foul. And let's see who they call it on. Number 22, Lips- Lipsy with the foul for Ames. Yeah, really aggressive move right there. Very, very aggressive by uh, by Julia off the dribble. And she took that on the uh, the right side, and attacked the attacked the glass from the right side. And got to remember, Julia is a left-handed freshman, and misses the first free throw. More tonight with uh, two points. Off I just bench. learned from uh, one of my eighth grade boys at MBA, Mark, last week that Julia has a twin. Really, young lady by the name of Sarah. Yep. 
Second free throw, no good. By Moore, rebound Ames. Here's Waite with it, coming off a ball string. On the baseline, shot up, no good. Rebound Bowles. So she took it away from Timmermans, who's in there for Ames. All that pass goes to Clark. Now Dowling in transition. Caitlin top of the key for three. It's up, good. She shot it right over Lipsy, who was guarding her in that position. And Clark now with 38 points is lighting it up here tonight. That's her seventh three of the, of the night. Aims the other way. Here's Lipsy with it to Moore on the right elbow. Now to get to the top of the key, and that's where Iams is with it. She's guarded by Clark. Tries to get it to Lipsy and nearly threw it away. Good job by Lipsy to gather it in. They work in the lane. A shot by Timberman's no good. Out of bounds to Ames. As they say, it went off of Bowles. Good flurry of activity there, but uh, Caitlin, my goodness. Just coming down and firing. You know, we're not worried too much about running offense because she's making a, a lot of those. 52-35 Dowling. Runs with their largest lead of the night. And now Dowling with the ball after a missed shot. They run in transition. Clark gets it down court to Simplot, and her layup is good. And Simplot with her fourth point. Got her first start of the year, now has four points. Excellent assist there by Caitlin in the open court. Two-on-one pass break after the outlet pass by Bowles. And now a three-pointer no good by Iams, rebounded by Moore. Outlet pass goes to Clark, down court. It's stolen away by Lipsy as it, Clark tried to hit Rodriguez with the layup. Tipped a little bit there by uh, number four, Caroline Waite, for the Ames Little Cyclones. And now the... Little Cyclones down court. Here's Waite. Thinks about the three. Won't shoot it over more. Gets it over to Lipsy, who works the right side. Top of the key to Waite. Dowling stays man-to-man. -man. They've been in it all night. Down the lane, Waite. Her shot blocked by Bulls. Right back to Waite. And we've got a whistle and a reach-in foul on Dowling. Maybe out of bounds to Ames. Looks like maybe Rodriguez. And the foul is on Brianna. So Rodriguez with her first foul. Second team foul on Dowling. Ames with three fouls. Brooks Sprague is back into the Ames lineup. She'll replace Lipsy. And Gipple will come in for Clark. Also leaving the Dowling lineup will be Meg Simplot. Grace Gaber in for her, Mark. And Gaber checks in. Ames inbounds the ball. They get it to Spragans. Brooke with it. 5'9", Jr. Running the point. Triple handoff to Iams. Coming off a ball screen guarded by Gaber. Iams with it. She'll hand it off to Wait. It's off the screen, top of the key, works the left side. Now they dribble handoff over to Spragans. In the lane, works the left block, can't get a shot. To Iams, dribbles in the lane, running jumper, good. Right over Gaber is Iams with her 10th point. Big time shot right there in traffic, going 54. into the middle of the lane there. 54-37, a minute remaining in the third quarter. And now dribble driving is Gipple, leaves it for Bowles, layup good from the left side. Lexi Bowles with her fourth point. Wide open layup based on the dribble penetration by Gipple drew the defender. Bowles, Bowles on that, is all along. On that left block. Not a shot blocked by Bowles. That was weight shot. Little mid-range jumper in the lane on the right side. And it was blocked by Bowles. Out of bounds to Ames as Lipsy and Graw check in for the Little Cyclones. 42 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. 56-37. All right, Ames with it. They get it into White. She leaves it for Waite. Her three-pointer knows no good. Rolls around the rim. Picked up by Lipsy. Underneath the Waite. Layup is no good. Rebound comes out to Dowling and Bowles. Good Lexi play by with the uh, little Cyclones. Couldn't convert, but They had several cut. chances there, Steve. Now Gaber with it. She's double-teamed. Leaves it for Bowles. Her shot up and good. Lexi Bowles got a, a nice pass inside, and she went right around Spragans. Good dish again there by, uh, was it Gip? I think so. I think it was Gip on that yeah. far side. They were a little two-player game over there. Five seconds remaining, 58-37 Dowling, and a three-pointer up and good. So that 21-point lead for Dowling has now been wiped out at the horn as a three-pointer by Waite. She can shoot it, can't she? Yes, she can. That's her fifth three of the night. She now has 17 points, and we go to, she we've come to the it. end of the third quarter with the score. Dowling, 58 the Ames Little Cyclones 40 back with the fourth quarter of this girls contest from the Dowling Gym here on Iowa Catholic Radio.
Thank you, Construction Professionals, for your support of Dowling Catholic Sports 365. Construction Professionals is a family-owned business dedicated to our customers. Whether designing, building, or renovating, we are here to better serve you. Our passion for quality craftsmanship, paired with our dedication to creativity, result in a home that reflects your personality, style, and family function. Construction Professionals. Design. Build. Renovate. CPCustomHomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Carbaca, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des DesMoines-DentalAssociates.com. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And welcome back to the Dowling Gym underway here in the fourth quarter. Dowling with the ball. Clark gets it inside to Nye Tong on the right block, and her layup is good. Nye with her seventh point. Beautiful Runes look lead. there by the point guard, wasn't it? Yep. 20 points now. The Dowling lead over Ames. 60 to 40 is underway here in the fourth quarter. The Maroons' largest lead has been 21 before that three pointer by Ames, Caroline Wade. And now another three pointer up and good by Ames. Ashley Iams with her 13th point. Cuts the Dowling lead to 17. In the lane, pull up jumper good by Clark. They cannot guard her close enough. Clark with she got her down 40th. There deep. She was about 10 feet from the hoop, and they didn't bring anybody else to help and that's that's a recipe for disaster if you're aims clark with 40 now and it's 62 43 dowling with the basketball spragging she's cut off by tong in the lane leaves it for the freshman white she can't get a shot off now Ames will get it back out the weight beyond the three-point arc and reset good hustle that time by the maroons on defense here's weight guarded by clark to get it inside to kennedy Kennedy White with it as a ball on the floor and a timeout called by head coach Joel Sullivan as he saw his team struggle and his freshman White on the bench. And this will be a full timeout, so we will take one ourselves with 6.42 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling girls leading Ames 62-43 at the Dowling Gym back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80 percent of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at MercyDesMoines.org. Back here at the Dowling Gym. Ames coming out of the timeout. A three-pointer in the corner. It's no good by Ashley Iams. Remount out to Dowling. Maroons in transition. Gaber for three left wing, and it's good. A Tami and Sons three-pointer by Grace Gaber. Her first three of the night. First a, basket of the night. And basket, yeah. That's her 30 second leading score on the, on the 32nd three of the year. Yeah, her first points of the night. Hard to believe. And it's 65-43. Dowling by 22. Back comes Ames and Lipsy for three, and it's no good. Rebound out to Dowling. And now launching a three, no good. Missing uh, the back iron is Dowling's, is Ames now with the rebound off a missed shot. Wait in the lane with the left hand. Layup good. She went through traffic there to score. Caroline Wait. Phenomenal player. They list her at 5'4. She can't be any more than 5'2. She has 19 points She's really for the 5'4 well uh, junior. Listed as 5'4 yeah. junior. You're right, Steve. 65-45, Dowling by 20. Five and a half minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Here is 
down the lane. Emma Gipple shooting yeah. and scoring. Gip with her fifth point. Gip in traffic with the left. Nice move. Both teams trading baskets. Ames has to get a stop to uh, get right back in it. Kept this thing in the single digits. Little Cyclones get a shot in the lane. It's no good by Lipsy, but they keep it alive. And a shot in the lane up and good by Seibert. And Coach Sullivan wants his team to press. Yeah, Ames is going to have to do more than trade baskets here with the Maroons to cut into this deficit. And they, I'm sorry, they give that basket to Iams. That's her 15 point. Clark with, <laughs> a, with a beautiful pass in the paint. And shooting and scoring for Dowling is Nai Tong. So Tong, with her ninth point, gets the uh, basket off the assist by Caitlin Clark. And now Ames in the lane, no good. Clark with the rebound. Out to Gaber for three. It's off the mark, no good. And the ball tipped out of bounds off of Nye Tong as she and Imes were battling it. And it'll be Ames basketball. Julia Graw checking in. Had a chance to meet her mother, who's uh, assistant coach for Joel Sullivan, Michelle Graw. Formerly Michelle Jensen, who played at Iowa State. Settled in Ames after playing high school ball in Nebraska. And there's Wade again getting underneath. Her shot up and good. She went right around the Dowling defender. We got a timeout Dowling before Clark shot. The coach is not happy with that defense. Yeah, not good about that uh, defense. Want somebody to pick it up. Caroline Wade. Phenomenal. Four Ames. We'll keep it here. Wait with her 21st point of the night. And a timeout on the floor. Dowling 69, Ames 49 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Amadale alongside Steve Devenny. Mike Swain will join us for the boys' contest. I want to remind you that the, uh, the 2020 Iowa Catholic Men's Conference will be Saturday, February 22nd at the Embassy Suites Hotel in downtown Des Moines. The conference will be in the morning only from 8 a.m. to noon. Doors open at 6.30, Mass at 7 with uh, Bishop Johnson. And the speakers, get this, Steve Devinney, speakers, Iowa State football coach Matt Campbell will be uh, headlining the event. And, of course, uh, Van Up show host Joe Stopulis and will also be there, and he will give a talk along with uh, John Leonetti, our MC, and I happen to do the Sports updates Monday through Friday on the Leonetti Show from 7 to 8 a.m., but that is Saturday. Again, Saturday, February 22nd. You can go to iowacatholicradio.com, click on events. Tickets are $20. Purchase them in advance. There's only 1,000 going to be sold, and they are going away, going real quick. So, Coach Campbell, what a good oh, message yeah. you'll have. Yep. Good Catholic man, lives in Ames, and uh, father of four. As Dowling with the ball on the... As they call the last time out, and they get it inside, and Gipple down the lane. Her shot up and good, and Gipple now with seven points. Aggressive move again off the dribble. Maroons are really being good with the ball north to south tonight, trying to get in the paint. 71-49 Dowling, and now here's Wade again. Dribbles in the lane on the left side and draws the foul. Foul beyond Dowling's Julia Moore, her second. So Julia has a twin sister, Sarah, huh? What I'm being told. Okay. So it's not been verified. Well, if you trust a young boy by the name of Jack Jepson over I'm, there. I'm not saying that. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm going to I've, where it's coming out of here. Oh, yeah. I, I'm guessing it's true. Okay. Did Sec- she make both? Wait. Has 22 points. What'd she have before that? Nope, she made one. Missed the first as we were sitting here visiting. Yep. Made the second. 22 now for Wait. Dribble weave by the Maroons. 71.50 Dowling in the lane. Clark pull up jumper in the lane. No good from about five feet out. Drew the foul. Fouled by uh, Tegan Lipsy. That'll be her third. And we wish her brother well. Taman, who will not play tonight, a sophomore for Ames. Boy, did he ever light up the scoreboard last year. He's Both. just so explosive. So quick. One of the top players for Ames coming through at the free throw line is Clark. Caitlin Drew the foul, hits the first free throw. She's got 41 on the night. Second one coming. And it's good. 42 points, 42 points rather, for Caitlin Clark. And she'll check out. And that might be it for her tonight. But Taman injured his ACL over the summer. Averaged 17 points, four rebounds, four and a half assists. 
Led the team with 33 made three-pointers. Shot 72% from the free throw line as a freshman at Ames last year. This year sitting out. He's a 6'2 sophomore. And he'll be able to name wherever he wants to go to college and play basketball. But he's rehabbing that knee. And they say the rehab now is nine months for ACL injuries. As Ames works it inside, Iams on the right block. And her shot is good. Iams with 17 points. She's also played well tonight. Yes, she has. Ashley Iams, 6'1 junior. Uh, Dowling with the ball. Some reserves in for the Maroons. Olivia Bailey couldn't handle the pass. And Ames will take over off the Dowling turnover with 3.10 remaining. 73-52 Maroons. And here is Waite with it. Top of the key guarded by Moore. Flips it over in the right, right side. And they work underneath. And a pass inside to Lipsy. And her shot is up and good from the right block. Taman Tegan Lipsy with her six point. Dowling with the ball. Here's Bowles on the left block, double team. Gets it out to Rodriguez, to Bailey. Maddie Wishman in there for the Maroons. As Maroons get it to Moore, underneath to Wishman, gets it back to Bowles, layup is good. Lexi Bowles off the bench with eight points. Kept the ball moving there. 75-54, Dowling scoring again. They lead by 21, two and a half minutes remaining. And here is Ireland Bust, the free throw line. Her shot no good, rebound Bowles. Lexi with it, outlet pass to Moore. And Moore draws the foul. It'll be on Caroline Waite. And on Waite, that'll be her second. And Team's third, fifth. 15 foul on Ames, three on Dowling. The final 218. So, yeah, Tegan, or Taman Lipsy, Tegan's younger brother. There are four sisters ahead of him. He's the youngest. He has four older sisters, and Tegan is the youngest going through Ames right now. So this kid is something, and we hope he uh, rehabs that knee. We want to see him play the next couple of years. Now, coaches don't want to see him play, believe no. me. <laughs> well, O.C. was not complaining about the fact that he's out <laughs> no, here. he wasn't complaining. But we want to wish that kid well, and he might see him in a in-state uniform someday. And here's Iams for a three-pointer that's up and good right in front of her coach, Joel Sullivan. That's her th- 20th point. Lighten that scoreboard up tonight. 75-57 Dowling. Bowles, right elbow, tries to pass inside to Wishman. It's stolen away by Ames. Spragans comes away with it. Gets to Iams. Back out to Spragans to Iams, left wing. She drives baseline, cut off. Stolen away by Dowling and Moore to Wishman. Maddie Wishman for the Maroons in the backcourt, double team. Gets to Rodriguez. Brianna with it. Dribbles through traffic and a foul on Iams. That'll be Ashley's third. And the 16 foul on Ames with a minute 24 remaining. Dowling 75, Ames 57, minute 24. Here comes the, uh, the, here comes the, the subs. They're going to empty the bench there for the this is little the, cyclones. This uh, obligatory line change. Yep. End of the line. line well, it's ni- nice to get some of these kids a chance it to is. play. It is. Look at the final minute and a half to play. Rodriguez will inbound the ball for Dowling for Ames. We'll try to catch their numbers here. Ellie Lynch, a 5'5 freshman. Number five, number 10 in the lineup for Ames is Elena Deerdorf, 5'7 freshman. Corner three by Rodriguez. Good! Brianna Rodriguez with her fifth three, uh, to me and Sons three pointer. And now the Maroons with the line change themselves. Leah Teachens in there, 5'10 junior for Ames, number 12. Tiffany Wrong, 5'9 senior in there for the Little Cyclones. And Madison Panconan, 5'8 sophomore in for the Little Cyclones as we have a. 30-second timeout called by Dowling. We'll keep it here with a minute 12 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Dowling by 21 here. Steve DeVinney, the Maroons are waiting for tomorrow night as Dowling will take on the Waukee Warriors, whose head coach, Chris Guess, by the way, married to his lovely bride, Sherry, for many, many years. I think Chris would take her... On a well-deserved date sometime. <laughs> Coach Guest in his 17th year at Walk. He got it. just seems like he's been there 25. It's only 17. 24th year overall. So he spent about seven years somewhere else. A tum was. Where that is correct. Yep. I was wondering if you knew the answer to that. Used to play in Coach Shartner's league over there on the uh, – Oh, back yeah. When, back when all the city schools played. That's along right. Along with a tum in that uh, – I don't know what they called it, the Central Conference, whatever they called it. Metro Conference. Metro, yeah. yeah. And, of course, uh, Coach uh, Guess went down to Atoma and picked up a win on the uh, 
Frank Houston Court, the Chris Guest scoreboard, I think is what they call the Chris it. Chris Guest Invitational. Well, the Chris Tumblr. Guest scoreboard and the Frank Houston Court, because Frank <laughs> used to longtime softball coach down there. Sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I got a little uh, news flash here from Coach Guest. Uh, last three meetings went at least one overtime between Dowling and Waukee. Well, that sets up tonight, tomorrow night's matchup. He's done a good job against Caitlin Clark in years past. I think she averages about 50 on him. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> including that overtime game. Was it last year or the year before regular season? He had a great story he told oh, me. He says, you know, goodness. that one year you guys came in, it was on Mediacom, and Caitlin really wasn't interested in playing with us. Correct. It, it showed, and we were up by 15 or 16 in the second half, and all of a sudden Caitlin scored 30 in the fourth quarter. And, and overtime. And in overtime to yeah. win it, and yeah. the rest is history. Let's see. Uh, Waukee's last win at Dowling was back in January of 2017. The Maroons have won three in a row against Waukee, according to my notes. So Dowling leads that series 8-7 to seven here since 2009. There you go, Coach. I got my notes out. Final Into score, 78-57, Dowling with the win over the Ames Little Cyclones as they dribble it out as the Maroons score. The Maroons put up 40 points in the second half as uh, they outscore Ames 20-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter and outscore Ames 20-10 to 10 in the third quarter. So it's Maroons 40-27 to 27 in the second half after leading 38-30. And the Dowling girls now improve their record to 11-2. They're now 5-1 and one in Central Conference play. Ames falls to 6-6 six and six on the season, 2-3 and three in Central Conference play as tomorrow night, Dowling will take on Waukee right here and a girls and boys doubleheader. Next up for the Ames Little Cyclones, they'll be home tomorrow in a girls and boys doubleheader against Hoover. Again, the final, Dowling 78, Ames 57 in game one of our doubleheader. We'll take a break and come back with game two alongside Steve Devenny, Mark Amadell. We'll be back with our total up the scoring and get some final comments tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. Thank you, r r Realty Group, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. r r Realty Group is an Iowa commercial real estate owner and developer that provides services for all commercial real estate needs, including brokerage, interior space planning, real estate management, construction, and more. r r Realty Group has been accommodating business expansions and real estate solutions since 1985, solving commercial real estate needs. r r Realty Group, establishing long-term relationships built on trust. The home and away voice of Dallin Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym alongside Steve Devenny. I'm Mark Amadale. Final score of the girls' contest, Dowling 78, Ames 57. Dowling girls now 11-2 overall and... Five and one in Central Conference play. The Ames Little Cyclones fall to six and six overall, and two and three in Central Conference play. The Little Cyclones ranked twelfth in the last Girls Union poll last Thursday. Dowling Girls ranked third, and just busy pulling up the uh, scoring here from this game. As Ames Little Cyclones had two players in double figures. Steve Devaney. I have uh, Caroline Waite. With 22 points on the night, she hit five three-pointers and a couple of two-point baskets for her 22 points. Ashley Iams chipping in 20 points for the Little Cyclones, the uh, 6'1 junior post player. Had a nice job inside. Then single-digit scoring for Brooks Spragans. Tegan Lipsy with six points and two points for Madeline Timmermans. As... Morgan Seibert did not score. One of the starters for Ames did not score. Ames went six out of eight at the free throw line. So, again, Ames with two players in double figures, led by Waite with 22 points and Iams with 20. For Dowling, Maroons were led by Caitlin Clark with a very smooth 42 points. Is that what you had there, uh, Mr. Devaney? 42. Yep. 
Uh, how many threes? Seven threes? Uh, got it for seven, yep. yeah. Yeah, the, the team had ten threes. Emma Gipple had one, and uh, Brianna Rodriguez had one, and Grace Gaber had one for her only points. Nye Tong with nine points for Dowling. She was the second leading scorer, followed by off the bench, Lexi Bowles with eight points. Emma Gipple with seven. And running out scoring for Dowling, Meg Simplot. Got her first start tonight. Unfortunately, it was for the uh, injury to Ella McVeigh out with a hamstring injury. Yeah, Simplot with four points. Three points for Brianna Rodriguez. She hit that three-pointer in the corner from the right wing, the right side. And three points also for Grace Gaber for Dowling. The Maroons went eight out of 12 at the free throw line. And the quarter scores. Dowling got out to a 24-14 first quarter lead. And outscored or Ames outscored Dowling in the second quarter, 16-14. Dowling with an eight-point lead at halftime, 38-30. And the Maroons outscoring Ames 20 to 10 in the third quarter. Dowling led 58-40 going into the fourth quarter and outscored Ames 20 to 17 in that fourth quarter to win at 78-57. Mr. Devinny, any final thoughts before we uh, turn this over to Mr. Swain, who just snuck in behind us uh, tomorrow night? I'll see you back here. I'll keep that chair warm for you. Yeah, we. I think between you and me tonight, we probably developed uh, even. A greater, more adver- adversarial relationship with Coach Guest. We, we were on him pretty all good. good, weren't we? Yeah, it's all good. We were see, on him pretty good. Here, here's what's going to happen with Coach Guest. You know, in the summers I see him, and it's not because he's running basketball clinics. He's out there mowing yards up there at uh, the fields up there at Waukee High School, baseball and softball. And both fans were complaining, and umpires were complaining about crooked lines and chalk in the field. Well, you know, when they go to field turf, that'll take care of that. It, yeah. Now, Johnson's already done that, and I think Waukee and a few other schools may do that, and maybe the new school at Waukee will. So that might be putting a hindrance on uh, Mr. Guess and his uh, lawn mowing ability. What's he going to do for uh, summer income? You know, I, mean, I don't know. We'll have to ask him tomorrow yeah. night when he's sitting down here to our left. Yeah. Well, no, uh, nice win for the Maroons tonight, it Mark. Is. And uh, Caitlin was really, really sharp tonight, 42 points on uh, – I'm guessing she shot 50%. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah, she, she was really good as usual. And when that's all over here in the next five, six, seven weeks, it'll be uh, it'll be missed. I, I Last score I saw on uh, Centennial, mm-hmm. boys were leading Ankeny Hawks at halftime by about 9 or 10. And uh, that game's being played over at Centennial tonight. So. All right. Steve Devaney, thank you very much. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Thanks, sir. All right. Steve Devaney, my broadcast partner, will take a break. Again, the final tonight in the girls contest, the Dowling girls improve their record to 11 and 2 with the win over Ames, 78-57 here at the Dowling Gym. When we return, we'll preview the boys contest between Dowling and Ames, the first time these two teams will meet this season, and they'll meet again later on in the end of February in Ames. We'll have game 1 tonight coming up. We'll pregame the boys contest here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you to Tumi and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tumi and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tumi and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tumi's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tumi and Sons is located on Southeast 1st Street, just south of downtown Des Moines and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. TumiandSons.net. This is Gloria Purvis, host of Morning Glory. Gosh, I wish they had Catholic radio when I was growing up. It would have been a source for me to learn more about the faith. When you pledge your support, you make it possible for this station to carry programs like Morning Glory every morning. No matter the amount, your gift works to make a difference for you, for others, and for the future of Catholic radio. Prayerfully consider making a gift right now. You can give securely online at iowacatholicradio.com, the Iowa Catholic Radio app, or call 515-223-1150. Welcome back to the Dowling Gym. Alongside Mike Swain, I'm Mark Amadale as we're going through the lineups here tonight as we switch over to from the girls' basketball game to the boys as they're just giving us 15 minutes between games, not the usual 20. Mike Swain, welcome to the broadcast, the first of three this week here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Game one tonight. This is actually Friday night's game between Dowling and Ames being played tonight, one of two CIML games, Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial doing battle up in Centennial High School tonight, but uh, Mike, welcome and uh, thanks. You're you're uh, you're juggling some events tonight. I know you had some other things going on with your uh, not your other job, but your other thing that you're a part of. And, and thanks for making time. 
Well, I was waiting for that bat signal, Mark. And, I gave it to you. I know. You did, you did a good job. So uh, luckily my meeting was in West Des Moines, so I didn't have far to go. No, you didn't. So, uh, and the parking was a lot. It was pretty good tonight. I got a good oh, spot. That's right. It won't be very good tomorrow night, I have a feeling. Uh, oh, with walkie. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> I think I'll have to take an Uber here. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can always park uh, like they do with some of the events they have here at Dowling during the school day, like Grandparents Day. They have big. Uh, you can always park at Walmart and then take the shuttle. The only go. problem is I don't know when the shuttle runs at night. I, I do that myself, and I'm carrying luggage, all the equipment to haul up here. All right, Dowling girls are winners, 78-57 over Ames in game one. And and Swamer, game two, it's Ames and Dowling, the boys contest. Ames won both meetings last year, so little Cyclones. And Dowling have a pretty good battle going. We'll go back to almost uh, 12 years. The series is tied at seven each. Ames won both last year, uh, and Dowling's last win was back in 2017 at Ames. So this has been a, a pretty good battle. Now, this is the second year they've both been in the same conference. That means they're going to play each other twice. Normally they play each other once unless it's postseason, but uh, great battle. The big difference is, well, for Ames, uh, there is uh, no Japan at Kellogg. He graduated, 16.8 rebounds, and no Taman Lipsy out with an ACL injury. We saw his sister play for the Little Cyclone Gals. 17 points, four rebounds, led the team with four and a half assists and made three pointers. That one two combo gone. And then I think the Craffle kid injured his left ankle, ended up being his left knee when they played Dowling here last time. Those three guys graduate. And now you've got, as Coach O'Connor mentioned at halftime, guys that are out of their roles or they're not playing the roles they would probably have had more of a reserve. And uh, Ames coming in. Keyshawn Brooks, the junior at 6'1", their leading scorer, and Corey Phillips, who we saw get called up last year as a sophomore, their starting post player, and those two young men probably would be coming off the bench if everything was holding true because uh, Casey Mum out. He had a, a knee issue. He is uh, on the shelf this year, outstanding football player and uh, a basketball player for Ames last year. He is out also, so there's some scoring that is not on the court right now for Ames. Well, and if you're a basketball fan, you're just so disappointed that Taman Lipsy is not going to be able to play at all this year, Unbelievable. Uh, obviously with the ACL injury. Uh, this is one of the most highly recruited uh, players in, in the state of Iowa, and he's got a lot of big names. Obviously, the, the hometown team up there, yeah. uh, Steve Prohm would love to see <laughs> a commitment from, from Lipsy, but there are he's generating a lot of interest. Uh, there's some interest from North Carolina uh, in Lipsy, and uh, you've, got, you've got a lot of big name players. i got to believe that KU is going to be coming in. Obviously, Fran McCaffrey in Iowa. Uh, he is a fun player to watch, and it's just disappointing that we don't get to see him this year. Uh, hoping for the best, obviously, for him, Mark, that uh, his recovery will be speedy, and he'll come back exactly the same player that we all thought he was going to be this year, next year. You know, the last guy that North Carolina came up here to try to recruit, some guy named Harrison Barnes, right. making millions of dollars Harrison. in the NBA right now. Don't forget he? about Marcus Page either, another Page. Uh, another great uh, Iowa Cedar player that, uh, yeah. that Roy Williams has stolen. We won't even go down the Kansas uh, <laughs> list of, uh, you know, Heinrich and Collison and Rafe LaFrance. I mean, oh that, my gosh. that pipeline's deep. But, yeah, you know, Ames, uh, Keyshawn Brooks, you mentioned Mark averaging 14 points a game. He's shooting about 38% from three. Uh, Cooper Downs shooting 45% from three. The coach's and, son, yeah. Yeah, and, and we saw what happens, you know, when teams get hot. Mark, the, the other night against Ankeny, this was a team that came in shooting 30% from three, and they found their rhythm early, and they kept it on Dowling the entire game, jumped out to a big lead, and in the end it was too much, even though Dowling took the lead with just under a minute to go, could not hold it against Ankeny. So looking for a big bounce-back effort tonight from the Maroons. What a uh, game up at uh, Centennial. Uh, Centennial leads Ankeny. Uh, at one point, it was a pretty big lead, but it's getting very emotional. Ankeny, Centennial up 30-13. to 13. Uh, That was right before the half, and now they started the second half. That game started earlier. The girls started at 5-3, the boys at 7, so they're about an hour ahead of us. But uh, what a matchup up there uh, between Centennial and Ankeny. And right now, Centennial, the fifth-ranked team, leading the Hawks. Well, and, and again, the looking at that Ankeny team when they are shooting and that but that three ball is falling mark right they look as good as anybody but we saw them earlier in the year where that three ball was not falling and they had some problems offensively and so they sort of rely on that three-pointer and obviously uh with that with those two schools going at it I, there's a lot of uh, a lot of history with 
the people in Ankeny and uh, still getting used to that. I mean, you know, the, the whole Centennial and Ankeny Hawks thing. Uh, so what a great matchup that they've got going. So Seven years since the school's split, and they're I, still I holding know. the grudge. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. It's, uh, it, it's, it's great great athletics, though, by both schools up it there. Is. A, lot, a lot of fun. Absolutely. All right, it's Dowling and Ames here at the Dowling Gym. The boys game the teams are out on the court right now. We'll take a break and come back with our starting lineups, Dowling and Ames. First time these two teams have met this season. Ames comes in with a record of 5-5. Five and five. They're 2-2 two and two in Central Conference play. The Dowling boys ranked number 8 on the latest AP poll. Actually, another one came out today. I have to see the update there. Maroons were ranked fourth by the Des Moines Register. Dowling comes in with a record of 8-2, and two, and they're 4-1 four and one in Central Conference play. And both teams have been idle since last Tuesday. They were both stormed out on Friday due to the uh, winter storm. So we'll be back with the starting lineups. Dowling and Ames, the boys' contest, coming up on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Game two of our doubleheader for the Dowling Girls, a winner tonight over the Ames Little Cyclones, 78-57 in game one of our doubleheader. And let's take a look at our starting lineup in the boys' contest. First of all, for the visitors from Ames, the head coach is Vance Downs in his 16th year, 238 wins, 127 losses. Dana Goodwin, Andrew Zalaski, Jeff Steinis, and Keith Papin are his assistant coaches. And a little Cyclones, a record of 5-5. Five and five. They will start this lineup at uh, one guard, Cooper Downs, the coach's son, a 6'3 senior, averaging six points, four rebounds, four and a half assists. He'll wear number 22. The other guard is Keyshawn Brooks, 6'1 junior, averaging 14 and a half points, leads the team with 17 steals and 19 made three-pointers. He'll wear number 30. And one forward for Ames, Jamison DeLisi, a 6'2 senior, averaging four points. He'll wear number 32. And the other forward is Jonah Strawhacker, 6'3", senior, averaging 7 points, 3.5 rebounds. He'll wear number 34. And at center for the Little Cyclones, Corey Phillips, a 6'5", sophomore, leads the team with 9 blocks, scoring 8.5 points, 6 rebounds. So for Ames, it's Downs and Brooks, the guards. Delisi and Strawhacker, the forwards. And Corey Phillips at center. Little Cyclones come in averaging 45 points on offense, give up 50 points on defense. And now for the... Dowling Catholic Maroons, the head coach is Michael Connor in his 14th year. 196 wins, 107 losses, a 65% winning percentage. Assisted by Nick Wagner, Jimmy Nahas, David Combs, and Pat Henkinius. And Dowling will start at one guard, Matt Stilwell, 6'2", senior, averaging 10.5 points, leads the team with 14 steals. He'll wear number four. The other guard, Joe Stracco, a 5'10", senior, averaging 5 points, Two rebounds, leads the team with two and a half assists. He'll wear number 12. At one forward is Ryan Riggs. Riggs, a 6'8 junior, averaging 11 points, seven and a half rebounds, leads the team with 14 blocks. He'll wear number 20. The other forward is Drew Daniel, a 6'6 senior, averaging nine points, five and a half rebounds. Daniel wore number 32. He leads the team with 20 made threes. And the final maroon getting the start tonight for uh, Dowling Catholic is Matt Riedel, a 6'3 junior, averaging seven, averaging eight and a half points, three and a half rebounds, and he'll wear number 24. So for Dowling, it's Stillwell, Strockel, Riedel, Daniel, and Riggs. Dowling comes in averaging 56 points on offense, 42 points they give up on defense. The Maroons with an 8-2 and two record. And Swamer, what do you see as this match? If Dowling has the length and the experience after Ames with their uh, uh Crushing injuries to Mum and to, uh, obviously, uh, 
Cooper, and Cooper Downs is going to have to take a big load off the shoulders of the rest of the team, but Livesey being out, and that's 17 points they had last year as a freshman who's out for the year. Yeah, I, cl- I think clearly that uh, Dowling has the height advantage and, and probably the talent advantage as well, Mark, but I, I think for Coach O'Connor and the Dowling staff and the Dowling program, they need to get Ryan Riggs off to a good start. He really struggled against Ankeny. They were not able to get the ball inside to him. Their leading scorer ended up with two points against Ankeny that night. So let's see if we can get Riggs off to a fast start. Now we're underway as the ball is in the backcourt uh, by Ames. It was and tipped, yeah. So Dowling will hold possession. And they uh, get the ball back. So Dowling wins the tip. They go right to left towards the south basket. Riedel for three. It's up off the back iron. No good from the right corner. The rebound cleared out of there by Ames. Little Cyclones with it. As they have Downs, Brooks, Delisi, Strawhacker, and Phillips. Dowling with uh, Stillwell, Straco, Riedel, the three guards, along with Daniel and Riggs. Ames running their offense against Dowling's man-to-man. With it is Brooks, and he'll leave it for Strawhacker. They've worked the right side. Now the big guy, Phillips, the 6'5 sophomore, brings Riggs out beyond the arc. Phillips really not a threat to shoot the three. He's made four of them on the year. We'll see how that develops. Ames being very deliberate here and running their first set on the offensive end. Well, there's an emphasis, I'm sure, with the Dowling coaching staff to get back to Dowling defense. Mark, we didn't see that against Ankeny where they gave up a lot of points. Little Cyclones working inside to Phillips, and he scores. Nice patience that time by Vance Downs' team, and they shoot and score 2 to nothing. Ames. Well, just sort of a roll off of a ball screen, and... Dowling's slow to rotate, and now Ames has gone to a 2-3 zone here, Mark. Runes now with Strockel at the point, top of the key. Gets it Stillwell, right wing. They got Riedel on the left wing. They're working inside to Stillwell. Works the left block. Gets in the corner to Riedel, left side. Underneath, they work it to Daniel, and he leaves it for Riggs. Layup, good, good ball movement by Dowling from short corner to short corner. Really good passing that time. It starts with getting the ball to Stillwell inside, and then he made that pass to the short corner like you mentioned, Mark. Sw- able to swing it around to Riggs, and uh, good job by Drew Daniel that time. Right, Ames open up 2-3 zone. Dowling stays man-to-man. Ames with the ball left to right towards the north basket. The Little Cyclones in their road black uniforms with uh, red numbers. Dowling in their home white uniforms with maroon numbers and letters. Here's Phillips with it. And they work it in the lane. A shot off the glass. Up and good. Nice strong move that time by Little Cyclones. And that was uh, Keyshawn Brooks with the basket. Matt Stillwell guarding him. Mark, that looked like Matt Stillwell's move where he (laughs) drives to the basket and puts it off the backboard. Uh, And nice job by Keyshawn Brooks that time. Well, teams in the CIML spent a lot of time underneath. And now they nice pass inside from Strocko from the left elbow inside to Riggs on the left block and a foul called on Ames. Yeah, already we've seen Riggs with the basket. And now that time going inside, looking for the big guy, trying to get him involved early. I like the game plan. And one thing that Dowling likes to do is get the other team in foul trouble. That's, that's the first foul on Phillips, Ames' as post player. So we'll see if that, how that plays out as that is the first foul of the ball game. Stillwell, the right elbow, has the ball poked away by Brooks. The other way we go, and a layup up and good by the Little Cyclones. Brooks got the steal, and then he gets the basket as his teammate gave it back to him. And he's got four of Ames' uh, six points. Ames up by six. Oh, that time Stillwell tried to dribble against that zone. And he was able to have that deflected away, Mark. You've got to be able to swing that ball. And that is a second foul on Phillips for Ames. As Ames up four, I should say. Six to two little Cyclones with just under five minutes remaining here in the first quarter, Mike. Yeah, that could be a big foul. I think Coach Downs is going to have to go to his bench. Yeah, he's going to get uh, Patrick Kraffel into the lineup, number 44. Kraffel is 6'4", junior. His brother, Will, was out for the year after playing Dowling last year back in December in the Ames win here. Will injured his, we thought, left ankle, ended up being his left knee, and rehabbed it, and now is a running track at Wartburg. One of those seniors, second free throw good. That goes one of two. That's another thing we saw, Mark, that Dowling struggled from the free throw line against Ankeny. Missing some easy opportunities. 18-26 to 26 last uh, Tuesday night against the uh, Hawks. Now Dowling with full court pressure. And now corner three up and good by Kashawn Brooks. And he's bringing it to, Mar- to the Dowling gym tonight. That is his 
first three of the night, and he's got seven. Well, Mark, he's already been attacking the basket, so he's already in somewhat of a rhythm and shooting 38% on the year. Dowling's got to do a better job closing out on him. Six-point lead for Ames. As this series is tied at seven between the two clubs. Ames has won the last two innings, and now a three-pointer by Stillwell is up and good. To me and Sons, three-pointer by Matt. 1501 Southeast 1st Street in Des Moines, 515-282-7976. To me and Sons, and they sponsor our three-point shot, and that's the first one for the Maroons tonight, Matt Re- Stillwell. Really nice ball movement that time. Swung it to wide open Stillwell, and he stepped up and buried it. Now Stillwell, that is his fifth made three of the season. This is game number 11 for Dowling. Maroons commit the record of 8-2. and two. They're 4-1 and one in Central Conference play. Ames is 2-2 two and two in Central Conference play and 5-5 five and five overall. The little Cyclones down some players, but they're battling a 500, and they're on, they got the lead against Dowling here with three and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Well, and they're being very deliberate. Can Dowling sustain this defensive effort here? Sort of gets monotonous. You've got to, got to really work through this, Mark. Games just playing catch on the perimeter, and they run some back cuts, but can't get a look. And yeah, that. This, this is where you want that shot clock to be in effect. If no you ever have a high school it. shot clock there. The ball's being moved around, but nobody's advancing. Now we're out to half court between well, and, the circles. And, yeah, now advanced downs is called a called set. So almost like a deliberate taking a minute or so off yep. the clock and then going into a set play. And that time Brooks with the travel mark turns the ball over. So good job by the Dowling defense staying Absolutely. with it and not breaking down. Well, just trying to reduce the time mm-hmm. and get the ball and maybe his athletes. Right now you can see because Sean Brooks is one of the athletes he wants it in. Phillips is on the bench now for Ames with two fouls. So take a lot of time off the clock. Nine to six Ames. Dowling with the ball off the turnover. Michael Keel in there along with Omaha Ballou. He dribbles baseline, draws the foul. Oh, says he set the baseline out of bounds off his foot. Well, Andrew Lynch was had that ball inside, made a good pass to Omaha Ballou, but when he tried to attack that on the baseline, stepped on the out-of-bounds line and turnover to Ames. Well, a nice flash by Omaha. Yeah, nice really good flash, and a good pass by Andrew Lynch. So Keel and Lynch and Ballou, the three in for Dowling, as Daniel and Stillwell stay in. Straco, Riedel, and Riggs on the bench for the Maroons. 9-6 to six our score, 220 remaining with the basketball. Yeah. Is Keyshawn Brooks. Dowling's picking it up a little bit defensively here. You can just see the, a little bit more effort. Uh, trying to make Ames play a little bit quicker. Brooks, the leading scorer with 14 points, has the ball. Guarded by Stillwell, coming off a ball screen by Kraffel. Now jump back three from the right side. Good! Wow. Corner three by Keyshawn Brooks. That's his second of the night. That is a tough <laughs> shot there. T- step back three. And 12, he is feeling it tonight. 12-6 to 6 Ames over Dowling here in this boys' contest. Dowling girls a winner tonight, 78-57 in game one. Drew Daniel for three. It rims out no good. Lynch with the rebound. Gets to Stillwell. Matt for three. It's short. Tipped by Ballou. No good. Daniel with the rebound to Stillwell. Matt won't shoot it and dribble drives and is cut off in the short corner. And Maroons will reset with Keel at the top of the key. Well, nice job by Dowling on the boards. And Ames, if they're going to stay in that zone, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for Dowling players, not doing a good job blocking out. 12-6 Ames, Dowling with the ball, a minute 20 remaining. Ballou picks up his dribble, gets to Stillwell. Matt between the circles. And they get in the corner to Lynch. Andrew, pull-up jumper, short. And a rebound out to Ames and Craftville. Patrick Craftville off the bench with the rebound. Ames, Ames has it. Oh. And now they get it on the floor, and Ballou almost tipped it away from... Cooper Downs. He actually picked that ball up and dropped it again. I didn't think the Dowling player touched it, Mark. Probably should have been a turnover there. Yeah, Strawhawker has it. Ames running their passing game here, Mike. They they pass and cut. Right now with it is Cooper Downs, the coach's son, guarded by Ballou. And they're dribbling beyond the three-point arc. So nothing inside right now. Five out and cutters moving in and out for the little Cyclones. Very deliberate with their offense. Cooper Downs with it. He drew the foul, a touch foul on the hips by Ballou. So Omaha picks up his first foul. Yeah, just a little hand check there. And again, you've got to be disciplined, Mark. You can't break down during that cutting offense. That time, just a little touch foul. Ames went bound the ball. 
leading 12 to 6, 25 seconds remaining. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Kemen, Dental Associates, Construction Professionals, and Ashworth Vision Clinic. Mark Amadale, Mike Swain with you tonight. Steve Devaney was alongside in game one. Jeff Piggott is our producer. Final 10 seconds of the first quarter. The Little Cyclones will come away with the lead one way or the other. Coming off the ball screen is Brooks. Dribbles in the lane, and they're going to call the foul before the shot. Keyshawn Brooks, they got everything set up for him. And the Maroons defending, but they drew the foul. And that is on Stillwell, his first. So the second team foul on Dowling. Uh, just a really quick crossover that time by Brooks. Hard to keep him in front of you, as Matt Stillwell has found in this quarter, Mark. Riedel back in for Dowling. Stillwell will sit down. Riggs checks out for Dowling. And Drew Daniel in. I'm going to get it in to Brooks for three. It's no good. The tip no good by Cooper Downs. We've come to the end of the first quarter with the score. Ames 12, Dowling 6, along with Mike Swain, Mark Amadale, back with the second quarter in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, construction professionals, for your support of Dowling Catholic Sports 365. Construction professionals is a family-owned business dedicated to our customers. Whether designing, building, or renovating, we are here to better serve you. Our passion for quality craftsmanship, paired with our dedication to creativity, result in a home that reflects your personality, style, and family function. Construction professionals, design, build, renovate. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours, God bless. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Karbaka, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym, underway here in the second quarter with Ames leading Dowling 12 to 6 at the end of the first quarter. We start the second quarter, the little cyclones with the basketball going left to right towards the north basket here at the Dowling Gym. With it is Kashan Brooks. Also out there is Jonah Strawhacker. Jay Rathy, and then 6'2", senior number 20, gets the second quarter start for the Little Cyclones. As the And Cooper Downs with it as they just passing on the perimeter and looking for back cuts here as Brooks has it top of the key. Swings it over to the left side. That is to Jay Rathy. Top of the key to Craftville, who's the fifth starter out there. So Craftville and Rathy get the second quarter start. They come off the bench for head coach Cooper Downs. Corey Phillips on the bench frame, starting center with two fouls. We may not see him until the next, the second half. Good defense by the Maroons here, uh, Matt, Mike, but I'll tell you what, uh, Ames not in any hurry yep, to score. Another, another another minute off and then into a called set. And here is Brooks for three, and it's good, left wing. That, about that? That, that hurts. Uh, you, you spend a minute playing defense and then a called set to Brooks, and he just steps back and makes a three. Now Stillwell gets the pass from uh, Daniel. It's stolen away on the baseline by Ames. Nice steal that time by Strawhacker. Well, Matt's got to realize, Mark, he's going against the zone. He cannot put that ball on the floor like that. There's too many black shirts. Swing the ball with the pass. 15-6, to six, Ames. Little Cyclones with their largest lead of nine over the Dowling Maroons. With the basketball is Rathy. Gets it to Brooks, who's guarded by Stillwell. Seems like they run this passing game, and they turn around and call set play, and usually yep. it's Brooks involved here, That's Mike. right, yeah. They sort of isolate him at the top, run a box set down below, and been very successful. All right, here's a pull-up jumper. Up and good. That's Rathy. Well, Rathy with the height advantage over Straco that time and just got inside the paint and elevated and finished. And Ames right now being very efficient, very deliberate, Really testing the Dowling defense. Ames by 11 over Dowling, and now a turnover. A steal by Rathy, who made the last basket his first. 17 to 6, Ames by 11. That's back to back turnovers, too, for Dowling to start this quarter, Mark. Andrew Lynch and Omaha Baloo set to check in for the Maroons. For Dowling, it's Drew Daniel, Ryan Riggs, Matt Riedel, Joe Strocco. 
And Matt Stillwell, the five starters on the floor for Dowling. Here's Strawhacker as they run their passing game. Aims with it. Cooper down to Kashawn Brooks. He'll launch the three. Up and good right in front of the Dowling bench. Timeout Dowling. And Kashawn Brooks has brought it his fourth three of the first half. He's got 16 of their points. <laughs> yes, he does. I, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And they're, they're doing a great job sort of uh, lulling the Dowling defense to sleep and then brooks with step backs i think they've got an incorrect score up there mark yeah it should be 20 yeah to nine. That's he's what got I have. 16 of their 20 points right now yep so S- 16 points for Kishan brooks came in averaging 14 and a half and leads the team with 17 steals and 19 made threes and he's got four more to add to that so he's got 23 made threes Two points for Rathy off the bench, and Corey Phillips on the bench with the other two baskets, two points. Uh, now Dowling finds himself down 14, Mark, with five minutes to go. Remember against Ankeny, they were down 17 at half and had to make a furious comeback. So let's see if Dowling can shave this thing under double digits here before halftime. Maroons outscored 12-6 to six in the uh, first quarter, and they're outscored 8 nothing here in the second quarter. Lynch underneath, a little up and under good. Andrew Lynch from the right block. Yeah, that was a really nice up and under move, attacking inside that zone. That's what they've got to do. Full now court. Dowling trying to force the issue here, Mark. With four court press, and yeah. he's now has to get across the timeline. The coach's son, Cooper Downs, does. It's across the timeline. They'll backdoor cut to Strawhacker, and his layup is good. Now, and Riedel just losing his man. Coach O'Connor not happy with that. How about that bullet pass from Cooper Downs? Good the pass that time. Quarterback on the football team, and nice little pass. Now backdoor cut by Dowling to Lynch. His shot up and no good. Draws a foul. Nice assist that time by Ryan Riggs. Yeah, good t- find that time. I think Dowling can get that anytime they want, Mark. They can get that ball inside that sort of half circle area and then find the cutter on that baseline. It's been there all night. All right, Lynch to the free throw line for the Maroons. He'll have two free throws here. And the first one is up and no good. Andrew, a... 75% free throw shooter on the season. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you in part by Mercy One, r r Realty Group, along with Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Catholic Tuition Organization. Second free throw good by Lynch. He has three points off the bench for Dowling. And Matt Stillwell will check back into the Dowling lineup, replacing Riedel. Matt Riedel will sit down. Full court pressure by Dowling. Ames will throw it in. Downs trying to throw it in. Gets to half court. To who else? Brooks. Deshaun with it, dribbles in the lane, then kicks it back out, and the, and the little Cyclones will run some clock here with four and a half minutes remaining in the half. 22 to 9, Ames. Little Cyclones by 13. Their largest lead of the night. Dallin really trying to get out in passing lanes, force the issue, but unable right now to create turnovers. Here's Downs, or rather here is Brooks in the lane. Pull-up jumper, too strong, no good. Probably because it wasn't anywhere beyond 15 feet. It was a five-footer, he missed it. Too easy. Off the back iron, no good, rebound Dowling. In the lane, Lynch, his shot up and good! Nice feed that time by Omaha Baloo. Yeah, good job by Andrew Lynch providing a spark off the bench here. Five points for Lynch, it's 22 to 11. And a turnover here, Mark. And now... Stillwell intercepts the ball, down court to Lynch, inside to Riggs, and his shot up and good. Ryan Riggs with the basket, timeout Ames. 3.30 remaining, Riggs with his fourth point. 22-13 is our score, Ames by nine, and we will take a full timeout. With 3.30 remaining, second quarter, it's Ames 22, the Dowling Boys 13, back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics, Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. back 
here at the Dowling Gym following the Ames timeout. Ames 22, Dowling 13. Maroons with a 5-0 run there to uh, cut the lead to nine. Maroons trail by as many as 15 points here in the first half. 3-10 remaining, and Ames by nine and the basketball, and back to Ames taking some time off the clock. Craftville dribble handoff to Brooks. Now hands it off to Downs. Over to Craftville. Try to hand it off to a straw hacker, and he can't do it. Now he gets it to Brooks. Brooks leads in the corner for three. It's up and good. What patience aim shows. A corner three by Jamison DeLisi, his first three of the night, Mike. Well, just great offense that time. Ames being very unselfish, and credit them for stepping up and hitting shots, Mark. All right, Michael Keel in the lineup for Dowling. Backdoor cut by Riggs. His shot up and good. Ryan Riggs with his six point. And now they're going to get Dowling with a foul. I think they might get Andrew Lynch on that. Foul on the baseline. It will be on Lynch. Dowling full court pressing uh, Mike, as we've seen after made baskets and well, after and Riggs scored. And they're they they're trying to it. deny the ball. They are. Sometimes we tease Dowling in sort of a three-quarter court just to slow things down, but they are actively trying to deny the pass. All right, Cooper Downs throws the ball in the backcourt, and with it is Brooks. That's one way to beat the press. Have your quarterback throw it in the uh, front court, I should say. And he did. And Brooks made a nice catch. And now Ames run their offense. 2.15 remaining in the half. 25-15. Ames by 10 over the Dowling boys here in game two of our doubleheader. Dowling girls a winner tonight. 78-57 over Ames in game one. Ames boys got out to a 12-6 lead at the end of the first quarter. Now with the basketball is Delisi. And he goes around his defender and shoots and scores. It's fifth point or fourth point excuse me Boy, just a great crossover and against michael keogh who's normally a really solid defensive player delisi able to get right by him now daniel for three and it's good from the left wing drew daniel with his first three of the night now well, and dowling needs a stop here mark minute 38 to go down nine if they could get a stop here and finish with the basket get this thing to seven or six at halftime i think coach o'connor would feel pretty fortunate Let's see, second to me in Suns three-pointer night for Dowling on Drew Daniel. 515-282-7976 to me in Suns at 1501 Southeast First Street in Des Moines, just south of Principal Park. Minute 15 remaining. Ames 27, Dowling 18. Here is Brooks. Kashan with the pass on the left wing. Dowling's got a foul to get, a couple fouls to give, Mark. They could be aggressive going for a steal here, too. Now Cooper Downs with it. Hands it off to DeLisi. Now back to Downs. Cooper with it. Minute remaining. I think... Uh, Ames is content to uh, maybe take the final shot. Possession arrow favors Dowling. On the baseline is Straw Hacker. That's Can't get a shot exactly off. They, they threw need. it away. Down court to Stillwell. Matt in the lane with the left hand. Shot up and good. The blocking foul call on Ames. The basket will count. And Stillwell with a chance for an and one here. Wow, that's a great job by Stillwell recognizing where the defense was. They were going out on Omaha Baloo. He didn't have a good angle to get the pass, so he took it in all the way one-on-one on Delisi and finished. Yeah, Delisi was kind of on an island, and yeah. he just tried to guess and tried to somewhat defend Stillwell, but that's tough to do, and Matt, when he gets going, he goes, and that is his sixth point. Free throw up, good. Seven points for Stillwell, and it's 27-21, aims by six, with 45 seconds remaining in the half. At halftime, Kristen Meyer, the Dowling girls basketball coach, will join us. Talking about the Dowling girls win tonight. Full court pressure by Dowling, and now Downs gets it back, gets across the timeline. Leaves it for Brooks. He'll launch a three. Good. This kid can't miss his fifth three of the night, and he's got 19. Wow, Dowling took a chance that time, trying to go for a steal. They doubled, and was, when they were not able to rotate out on Brooks, and he made him pay. Deshaun Brooks with 19 points for the uh, 6-1 junior, and we're in the final 20 seconds. Dowling holding for the last shot. Ames has been in that 2-3 zone most of the first half. Trying to protect their center, Corey Phillips, and they played well without Corey in the lineup for Ames tonight. Underneath Stillwell, his shot no good. Rebound Ames and Craffle. Patrick with the rebound. Downs a half-court shot at the buzzer. It's no good. And we go to halftime with the Ames Little Cyclones leading Dowling by the score of 30-21 to here, Mike Swain. Oh, that was a big basket by Brooks. Mark Dowling had fought this way all the way back to get this to six and then took a chance, and Brooks able to capitalize on a three and send it to a nine-point deficit. Well, Kashawn Brooks has 19 of Ames' 30 points here at halftime. Five three-pointers that he's made, a couple of uh, two-point baskets he started out with, and 
This young man is having quite the night thus far, and that'll be an interesting adjustment for Dowling. Plus, you're going to get Corey Phillips back, the aim center, who was out with foul trouble. Yeah, they did that. It'll be Dowling ball to start uh, when we come back from half. So see if they can get a basket and a stop and get this thing down to where we're down to a four-point game, four- or five-point game, and then try and match some intensity here. Absolutely. Again, our halftime score, it's Ames 30, Dowling 21, along with Mike Swain, Mark Amadeo. Earlier tonight, the Dowling girls, a winner, 78-57, and we'll be joined by the head girls basketball coach of Dowling, Kristen Meyer, after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. Thank you, r r Realty Group, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. r r Realty Group is an Iowa commercial real estate owner and developer that provides services for all commercial real estate needs, including brokerage, interior space planning, real estate management, construction, and more. r r Realty Group has been accommodating business expansions and real estate solutions since 1985, solving commercial real estate needs. r r Realty Group, establishing long-term relationships built on trust. And welcome back to halftime here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadil alongside Mike Swain as we are at halftime as uh, Dowling trailing Ames 30-21. to 21. But earlier tonight, the Dowling girls with the win over the Ames Little Cyclones by the score of 78-57 and now joined by head coach Kristen Meyer, the Dowling girls basketball coach. Coach, thanks for joining us. Welcome aboard here at halftime. It's game one of three this week, isn't it? Yeah, it's a busy week for us. Thanks for broadcasting. We know that uh, this was a makeup from Friday, so uh, we're glad that you guys could make it. You know, busy week, but uh, we're excited. We started off with a good win tonight, and we'll keep it rolling. Well, hopefully that'll be the case. It doesn't get any easier. I mean, you have Johnston and uh, on Friday for a a conference game, and then tomorrow night you have, oh, Mr. Coach Guess and the Waukee Warriors come over here the one time you get to play them during the regular season. And who knows what happens in the postseason. Mm-hmm. And I just know the last few times you guys have played, as Coach Guest texts me during the game, overtime has been a, a is common right? denominator. So just common denominator. So is that true? I mean, yes. I got Was it overtime? Well, two out of three. Two out of three. I don't think we had an overtime last year regular season at their place, but it was the year before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was an exciting one. Where Ella hit the Clark. three yeah. to take it to overtime, yeah. and then. Uh, then Dowling won it in overtime. Yeah, and then the three overtimes at state this this past year. <laughs> that's the first round. So, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, should be. Well, Coach, congratulations on the win. And I want to talk about last and, th- and what goes to your mind. Obviously, on Friday, we're supposed to play Ames. Mm-hmm. That got, game got moved to tonight, which is good because a lot of teams haven't rescheduled Friday's game. You don't want to get too far behind. But what goes on? Because Friday, there's no game. And how do you work the weekend with the weather stay inside you know the fear of making sure everybody's safe how does a coach do you get the team together and continue what you're doing and that's practicing and trying to get better yeah the the tough thing is because you have to do your game prep for Waukee because obviously you got to prepare for them so we Mm -hmm. spent Wednesday and Thursday getting ready for Ames we didn't play Friday so uh, we were allowed to practice uh, Saturday and Sunday so we did our Waukee prep Saturday and Sunday and then today we had game day practice or like a walkthrough and did went back to our Ames prep to make sure that that was oh, fresh in our goodness. mind. So, uh, you know, it's you're trying to plan for a couple different games. But um, the girls do a really nice job of just trying to stay focused and, and listen to, to what we're, we're telling them from the bench and just figure things out as you go. Right. You were led tonight by Caitlin, 42 points, seven threes. And mm-hmm. the young lady to your right making her radio debut. Woo! You know, I made mine about 40 years ago. But I was up there on the balcony. That's what they put me. They was, I wasn't good enough to be down here. Meg Simplot, welcome. Thank you for coming and uh, being our guest. you got to start tonight. How about that? Talk about that. University of Kentucky uh, going to play softball there, right? Nope. Nope. That's Margaret Tobias. Meg oh, is, is uh, also plays soccer. Oh, soccer. Okay. Yep. So, Meg, talk about the start tonight. you got to hold that up right to there. There you go. You exciting? Um, yeah, it was very exciting. And... How'd you think coming off the bench is one thing, but starting is another. When Coach told you, and I know when uh, Ella went down with the hamstring injury, 
did you know you're going to start tonight or did they kind of hold off till game time i honestly didn't know until today before the game oh that's what you did coach i like that <laughs> yeah well we didn't know for sure about ella and uh coach lark told us uh, that she wasn't going to play tonight at about 3 30 today so um and we knew meg would be ready to play the last couple days uh, we've had her getting reps uh and you know she comes in at different guard spots anyway so we we felt completely confident having meg start we did a great job congratulations <laughs> thank you part of this you know you got you were the gal and i, I know coach Devaney talked about this the first part of the game, shots weren't falling, but somebody kept the ball alive. You got your hand on a couple balls to keep possessions alive, and then somebody scored. Caitlin or someone else would score. And that's a big part. That doesn't show up in the box score. Do you know that? Yeah. Well, talk about that. You're, you, you have pretty good hustle out there, and yeah. soccer's your sport, right? Yeah. So we, we've seen that before, right, Coach, with soccer players playing basketball? You do a pretty good job. Thank you. All right, got to give a shout-out to somebody. Who you want to? Who's out there listening? Uh, probably all my friends and well, Ellen McVeigh can... in the front row over there. You wave to her? Yeah, they're waving. At, they're listening. Yeah, About I know. a 20-second delay on their phones, but they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, like you mentioned, I think Meg had six rebounds for us tonight, at least on our stat sheet. That, um, Points and exactly free throws is all I keep. But... Sure. But, yeah, like you mentioned, a couple big offensive rebounds yes. that she went in to get that kept the ball alive for, then, uh, for us to have some second-chance opportunities. So those, those were big plays for us. Meg, who were you uh, responsible for guarding tonight for Ames? What number? Uh, number three. Yeah, that was Spragans. Yeah. And she was in and out of the ball game quite a bit, it seemed like. But uh, how about that Caroline Wade? What a night she had. Who was responsible oh, yeah. for her? Because Coach called timeout at one point, and I know it wasn't about scoring. It was about playing defense, correct? Yeah. What was said? Come on, you can spill it. I don't it. remember. <laughs> I was waiting for Meg to say, let, Coach, let me take her. Yeah. I'll hang harder. Yeah. Let me take her. That's what should have been said. Meg, you're, uh, you're a senior? Yeah. You got to start. It's your first start, right, in your career? I started a few times last year when Grace was hurt. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. She was injured. So, so you're, this wasn't new. Yeah. Piece of cake. Yeah. And radio's all right. You're just like talking on the phone. You guys do that all the time. Or uh, on the phone. Texting, I or, think. Well, texting. I don't know how much they talk anymore. Oh. Okay. Just, just us old people. Yeah, we, right. I have conversations on the phone. All right, Meg, i got to ask you, tomorrow night, Waukee. There's been some great wars with Dowling and Waukee in basketball, boys and girls. Talk about the matchup tomorrow night. They're the team that knocked off Southeast Polk, right? Yeah. And we lost to Southeast Polk here. So, Your thoughts on Waukee? Who are you going to guard? Well, maybe um, she won't start. Yeah, maybe. Got... It'll either be her or Julia Moore. Okay. We're still yeah. figuring that out. So right. What have we been working on lately as far as what are they good at? Um, they have a lot of good shooters, so they're quick and fast, and they can get a shot off quick. So Their coach is listening, by the way. <laughs> coach Guest. Well, that's not a surprise. He, kn he knows they uh, quick are quicker, fast, and have good shooters. Yeah. So say all the right things. They're <laughs> tough to defend. they got four three-pointers. Which one are you going to guard? I mean, you got to guard them all, don't you? Yeah. Well, the nice, uh, well, I don't know if it's good or bad. There's, you know, twins, a set of twins. So yeah. you either got to find, <laughs> if you're going by just what they look like, we might be in trouble. But <laughs> no, I thought I had this one. But Well, Meg, you did a great job. You gave a shout out. Any, any family members you want to give a shout out to? Uh, Are your parents listening? I have no idea. <laughs> they might. Well, this is also on podcast. It's replayed. Oh, so. nice. She'll, 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 she wants to give a shout out to my parents listening in Owen, I'm sure. Always give yeah. the old one shout out for the uh, for the Meyer family. You never know. All right, Meg. Best of luck tomorrow night and this week. Ames, Waukee, Johnston. Yeah. There's only what one practice in there. Maybe a practice and a half two. Hopefully. Wednesday. Well, and there's a little bit of weather coming Wednesday, oh, Thursday, Friday. Friday so yeah. fingers crossed uh, we're able to practice every day and then play on Friday. But we figure it out. We make it work. We can. Big Simplot, it's fun watching you play. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. And Coach Meyer, congratulations on the win tonight. And go get Coach Guest and the Walkie Warriors tomorrow. That's what we're hoping for. All right. Thanks for joining us here at halftime. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kristen Meyer, the Dowling Girls head basketball coach. And Meg Simplot, Dowling starter who played tonight, got her first debut on the radio. We'll take a one-minute break and return. Ames 30, Dowling 21, halftime of the boys game. Back with the second half in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. 
Thank you to Tamiya and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tamiya and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tamiya and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tamiya's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tamiya and Sons is located on Southeast 1st Street, just south of downtown Des Moines and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. Tamiya and Sons. Howdy folks, this is Jimmy Aiken from Catholic Answers Live, and it's very important that you support your local radio station because it's only your local Catholic radio station that makes it possible for you to hear wonderful programming like Catholic Answers Live and all of the other great EWTN shows. So please help them out right now and be generous. You can give securely online at iowacatholicradio.com, the Iowa Catholic Radio app, or call 515-223-1150. And we're underway here in the second half. Ames 30, Dowling 21. Dowling had the first possession. Mike, we had a 30-second timeout called as Maroons had their first possession, but in a turnover, and that led to an Ames possession. Excuse me. Yeah, Corey Phillips knocked the ball away from Ryan Riggs, and then Ames went into their four-corner delay game that uh, (laughs) they have made popular here tonight. And uh, Dowling almost forced a turnover. Ames got a quick timeout to save the ball. All right, Ames leading 30 to 21. Those, we have uh, just played about 50 seconds here in the third quarter after Ames got up to a 12 to 6 first quarter lead and led by nine at halftime. And Little Cyclones playing that patient offense, kind of make sure everybody touches the basketball, and then they try to isolate Brooks when they do want to get a shot off. And now Dallas coming at him. Yeah, you can see Dowling with their, in the ball. Yeah, their adjustment. They are now attempting to leave the ball on the outside, or leave their man and double team, force Ames to get out of this sort of delay. A good double team right now. That's five. And Boy, we've got a whistle and a timeout. That was not five seconds. <laughs> they had Corey Phillips on the sideline away from us. Wow. And had him tied up, and we'll keep it here as Ames retains possession. 6.49 remaining third quarter. Ames 30, Dowling 21. The Maroons come in, ranked number four by the Des Moines Register, eighth by the Associated Press. Ames with a record of 5-5, and and they're playing like a top-10 team right now. They really are. They're playing with a lot of confidence, and I really give Coach Downs a lot of credit with this game plan. It's it's forcing Dowling to do things that they don't want to do, which like double-team the ball and play defense for minutes at a time. And then... The other credit is, you know, that strategy is great, but then you got to have guys knock down shots when you get an open look. Yes, you do. And Ames has had that tonight. All right, they lob it inside to Phillips underneath, and the ball stolen away. Good defense by Riggs, stolen away by Dowling. And now Riedel has it in the front court to Daniel for three. It's off the mark, no good. Tipped by Riedel, no good. And retrieved and rebounded by straw hacker and aims with it so yeah. Rins got a good look just couldn't drain the shot he did drew daniel had a good look at it and then riedel with a almost nice attempt there and now a steal steal by matt reed or matt the striegel he goes down oh. court layup is up and good uh the basket will count anyway basket interference and a foul on aims will be on cooper downs his second and matt still well with the steal and basket yeah the basket went in even though brooks <laughs> went up and just grabbed the rim <laughs> i'm not quite sure what he was doing there but Great steal that time by Matt Stilwell. Ames outscored Dowling 18-15 in that uh, second quarter. Believe it or not, Mike, Ames has not shot a free throw tonight. Maroons are 2 of 5 at the line, and now Stilwell to the line to complete the and one. <laughs> so it's unusual. you, you got a lead, and you haven't shot a free throw all night. It, from a foul standpoint, it's been a really clean game. And Stilwell's free throw is good. And now Dowling going to go back to that denial inbounds that they had been doing. So throwing it in is Cooper Downs. And a five-second call as Coach O'Connor and all five assistants or four assistants said. Everybody's helping everybody count. Turnover against uh, Ames, Dowling basketball. The the official looked at Coach O'Connor and said, I think I got it. But, uh, again, great defense that time by Dowling. All right, Stillwell with nine points, and they work inside to Riggs. His shot off the glass leaves it short, rebound Ames, and Cooper Downs. Wow. It's wow. a really good move that time, Mark. He went right by his guys, went down on the baseline, avoided the charge, but couldn't finish. 
Matt Stillwell now with 10 points to lead Dowling. Ryan Riggs with six points all in the first half. Drew Daniel off the bench with, or Drew Daniel with three points. And off the bench, Andrew Lynch with five points in the first half for the Maroons. Strocko did not score for the Maroons in that first half. Dowling really getting after it defensively, Mark, on the on the ball itself as well as in the passing lanes. Really putting pressure on Ames. Ames by six, 30 to 24, 540 remaining. And now still well with another steal. As he picks Brooks clean, goes all the way down for the layup. Good! Matt Stilwell with his 12th point, and that's his second steal in the first half. Wow, that's just a great job by Stilwell defending Brooks. And now two, two steals for Stilwell already. Yeah, I'm at the second half. Two steals right. in, the, in the third quarter alone, just in the first uh, three minutes. Now Ames backing in, a reach-in shot up, and good by Strawhacker. The basket will count in the foul on Dowling, and Strawhacker with his six point. And he'll go to the line for an and one. Foul on Dowling, it'll be on Daniel. Uh, it looked like he was just trying to throw anything up, Mark, just to get a foul, and somehow <laughs> he that did. ball goes in. And that's been the kind of night it has for, for Ames. So Omaha Blue checks into Dowling lineup for Riedel. And free throw coming for Strawhacker, and it's good. Strawhacker, a 68% free throw shooter. He has seven points tonight. And it's 33-26, Ames by seven over Dowling. If you approach the five-minute mark of the third quarter, Dowling girls a winner, 78-57 over Ames in game one of our girls and boys doubleheader. We'll be back tomorrow night here at the Dowling Gym. It's Dowling and Waukee. Still with the ball. Dribbling the ball on the left elbow and a tie-up, and it'll be Waukee basketball as the Warriors force a turnover, Mike. The Ames ball, but yes, I'm that sorry, is, Ames. again, trying to dribble against that zone has got Stillwell in trouble a couple times. you got to just swing that ball and credit Ames with the turnover there. So the little Cyclones get it across the timeline. Dowling just overplaying the lanes. Press, and now Daniel with the near steal. He saves from going out of bounds. Ballou has it, and now they're going to call a timeout Dowling. Yeah, so they're going to give the ball to Dowling and a timeout. Good job by Coach O'Connor to call that. And it's a 30-second timeout called by the Maroons. Omaha Ballou had possession of the basketball, apparently. 33-26, aims by seven. And here in the third quarter, and Mike, I'll tell you, it's just been Dowling's defense. Their intensity has picked up here in the second half. And uh, that's something they had to do because Ames slowed the game down a lot in that first half. It really has. It, clearly it was an emphasis at halftime. Mark, the coaching staff said, we are not going to allow them to just run clock for a minute and then go to a called set. And they have been forcing the action, getting out, double teaming when they can. The press has done a nice job tonight trying to in, uh, deny the inbounds. And it's led to Dowling getting back in this game. They were down 15 at one point. Down seven with the chance to get this either to a five or four point game. All right, Michael Keel in the Dowling lineup for Joe Strocko. So it's Keel, Riggs, Daniel. That's Drew Daniel in the lane. Uh, turnaround shot by Riggs, no good. Left it short and rebound Ames. Also in there, Omaha Ballou and Matt Stillwell, the five on the floor for Dowling. Ames with it. Cooper Downs running the point. Leaves it to the right side. The ball nearly stolen away by Michael Keel and it's poked out of bounds. Jameson DeLisi had it stripped away, but it'll be Ames' possession. Yeah, nice job that time by Keo. And on the other end, Mark, doesn't get much easier for Riggs. He's got to be able to convert that when you get that look inside the paint from five feet out. Ames with it. Brooks is over on the right side to Cooper Downs. Now leaves it for a straw hacker. Ooh, Hands it off to Brooks, travel. and that's palming the basketball. Yes, definitely. Good High. job again. The Dowling defense really forcing some turnovers here, Mark. And they've got Brooks out of sync a little bit here. They do. Boy, he lit it up in that first half for Ames. Sean Brooks, five three pointers, a pair of two pointers, 19 points in the first half, and he's been silenced here thus far. Riggs down the lane, shot up and off the glass, good from the right block. Ryan Riggs. Mark, I think he can get that anytime he wants. Now we've got a whistle and a foul on Stillwell as Ames went over the top. Downs inbound the ball to Strawhacker and a foul on Stillwell. Yeah, just a little late that time, Matt getting out on that Ames offensive player running down the floor and said they grabbed him. But I think Griggs can do that at any time he wants against this zone. That was another walk 
that was not called. It's a no call, Mike. That's just got to play on. There's a lot of those. Got to play on. Ames with the basketball, and now we've got traveling called as try to take the euro step. Did Kishan Brooks, and they caught him for the third, maybe the fourth uh, step, and turnover against Ames. Back over to Dowling. 3:37 remaining, third quarter. Ames 33, Dowling 28. The little Cyclones have led by as many as open on the baseline. Good find. Riggs with 10 points. Uh, Stillwell with 12. Underneath Downs. His shot no good. Rebound Ballou. Omaha with the rebound. In the backcourt. He'll get it to Michael Keel. And Dowling will advance the ball into the front court as we approach the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Ames by three. Dowling with the basketball. And Ames in man now, Mark. I see Out of that. that zone. Underneath to Riggs. And his shot is good. Nice entry pass that time by Drew Daniel. Went right around Corey Phillips. Riggs right. with 12 points. It was just a great job. Right now, Riggs taking over. 12 points in the game, Mark, and Dowling's been able to find him early and often in this second half. 33-32, Ames by one. Maroons have cut into that 15-point lead, but a corner, we're going to call it a three, uh, is up and good by Ames. Mark, Dowling a little confused there defensively. I'm not sure if they were switching to a zone that time, but uh, missed assignment. That's a three-pointer by Strawhacker. And they go inside once again, does Dowling. Yeah, let's see what they fall back in here. They're they're in their three-quarter court trap press. But I'm interested to see what they fall back into, if they go back to man or if they're into a zone. So Riggs with the basket, and now Ames crosses the uh, timeline. They break the press. Now steal by Riggs. Bad pass to Stillwell. Matt underneath to Ballou, and it's poked away by Brooks. He saved the uh, basket, and Ames wants a timeout. As head coach Vance Downs wants a timeout, this will be a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. Minute 54 remaining here in the third quarter. Ames 36, Dowling 34 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports 365 is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic with two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling Catholic graduate, and Dr. Todd Pedig. The Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at Ashworth and 60th Street in West Des Moines, 515-440-4610, online at ashworthvision.com. The Catholic Tuition Organization provides the best tax savings over any other charitable giving in the state. 65% of your contribution directly reduces your Iowa income tax liability. Plus, there are still federal deductibility options to further save on taxes. Find details online, ctoiowa.org. All this for the kids and their future. The home and away voice of Dallin Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And back here at the Dowling Gym, 36-34, aims by two. Dowling with the ball. They lob it inside to Riggs, and a foul called. I think they're going to get Corey Phillips to aim center for his third. Yeah, he was holding Riggs as he was diving to the basket. It was a design set play to have Riggs go to the basket, and Phillips with the hold there. So he's going to come out with three. And Mark, another development here. So a minute 49 to go in the third, and Ames is only down to one timeout left in the game. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Vance Downs has uh, drained him. Now Michael Keel for three. Good! And that gives Dowling its first lead by one. 37-36. A corner three from the left wing. Mark, he's shooting 55% on the year from three-point range. That. So I saw it would be nice to get him a couple more opportunities, but great job that time by Michael Keel. Michael Keel with his sixth three of the, ni- of the year. And that is, uh, as you mentioned, 55% from three-point range, 41% from two-point range. Ames advance the ball. They get across the timeline, a whistle and a foul on Dowling. This will be on Daniel. That'll be his second. And it'll be Ames basketball. And two free throws coming for Little Cyclones Keyshawn Brooks, who has 19 points all in the first half, he has yet to score here. A minute 23 remaining in the third quarter. First free throw is good. 20 points now for Brooks. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by our good friends at Catholic Tuition Organization, r r Realty Group, Tourers Glass and Door, and Mercy One. Second free throw no good by Brooks. 
Dowling with the basketball. Riggs dribbles in the lane. It's stolen away by Ames. As they picked him clean, Straw Hacker put his arm down and picked off Riggs. Ames with the turnover and now the basketball in the front court. Little Cyclones with it. Dowling stays man-to-man. It's Keel, Ballou, Drew Daniel, Riggs, and Stillwell. And now Brooks starting to heat up. His shot up and good as he made a nice cut, Mike. Uh, it's a great job by Brooks just taking advantage of his quickness against Omaha Ballou. But Dowling's backside defense has got to do a better job collapsing and trying to take a charge. Stillwell in the lane, and he draws the foul. Kraffel will pick up his first foul. I think they're going to give Matt two shots there. Thought it was on the pass. No, they're they're going to they're going to line up. Yeah, Vance Downs is asking the same thing, and I would be too. And I know you would. Your dad would have to keep you back from the official. I, that was a shot. I agree. <laughs> I could just hear your dad tell. First free throw, good by Stillwell. Our official tonight. Mr. Muhammad Abdullah say, yeah, that was in the act of shooting. Dylan Dinkla and Greg Berard are our other two officials. Second free throw, no good. So Stillwell goes one for two, and he's got 13 points. Let's see if Ames doesn't try and hold for one shot here, although Dowling's going to make it difficult by the way they are getting after it and doubling the ball. 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Ames 39, Dowling 38. The Maroons have had the lead once tonight, and that was a one-point lead just a little while ago. Ames with the dribble weave. This is Kraffel with it. Dribble handoff to Strawhacker. Now it gets to Brooks. Brooks guarded by Ballou. This is a pretty good matchup here. Ballou coming off a ball screen. Here's Brooks in the lane. His shot up and good off the glass right around Riggs. 41-38 Ames, and that uh, shot at the horn will not count by Keel, and we've come to the end of the three quarters of play with the score. Ames, 41, Dowling, 38, alongside Mike Swaim. I'm Mark Amadale, back with the fourth quarter in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for your support of Dowling Catholic Sports 365. Construction Professionals is a family-owned business dedicated to our customers. Whether designing, building, or renovating, we are here to better serve you. Our passion for quality craftsmanship, paired with our dedication to creativity, result in a home that reflects your personality, style, and family function. Construction Professionals. Design. Build. Renovate. cpcustomhomes.com. From our family to yours. God bless. Thank you, Dental Associates, for underwriting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. With over 40 years' experience, Dental Associates is a group dental practice with the mission of promoting optimum health and well-being to all patients, providing preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry for the entire family. Message underwritten by Dr. Kenton Gleichman, Dr. Steve Carbaca, Dr. Christine Mulcahy, and Dr. Ben Nagel. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym underway in the fourth quarter. Ames 41, Dowling 38 here in this boys' contest. Ames back into a zone, Mark. Yeah, they went man-to-man there for a while, but now with Corey Phillips on the bench, a three-pointer by Daniel is off the mark, no good. Fight for the rebound. Stillwell keeps it alive, but right into the hands of Delisi. And now Ames with it, and Cooper Downs will dribble in the front court for the Little Cyclones. Good look that time by Drew, just couldn't get it to uh, fall. Ames will run some of their offense with a lot of passing and cutting. Nobody posting up down low. Looking for a lot of back cuts. Now Downs with it between the circles, guarded by Stillwell. Now Stillwell double teams the ball, and that's Kraffel with it. They get it to Delisi. Now that time had Straco turned his head, Mark, that was a steal that he could have grabbed, but didn't see the ball coming. And Dowling's There's the steal out there. for Straco. And now Joe has it. Three on two fast break, and he draws the foul. The foul will be on Kashawn Brooks. Yeah, only the fourth team foul for Ames, Mark, so still a little ways to go before Dowling's in the bonus. And only Brooks' first foul of the night. What a night he's had. 20 points for the young man for Ames. Actually, 24 points for the uh, for Brooks. As we're... Into the fourth quarter. Briggs with it after the inbounds pass. At the right elbow. Power dribble. 
to the uh, right block. His shot with the left hand, no good. Rebound Ames and Strawhacker. Just a, sort of a tough angle that time for Riggs. Yeah. So wasn't able to use that that body. Got to get that shoulder square yeah. to the basket, and he was going to go. Now Riggs with the steal. Stillwell has it all the way down for the layup, but it's good. They took it away from Craffold half court. Yeah. Stillwell scores. And that is his 15th point. And it's 41-40, Ames by one. Little Cyclones breaking the full court press. Felici over to Brooks. He'll launch a three, and it's good. This kid wow. will not cool off. Wow, and again, Dowling taking some chances, leaving Brooks wide open that time. Couldn't get the steal, and Brooks makes them pay. 27 points for Kishan. Now, Dowling on the short quarter. Daniels pass to Riggs, stolen away and broken up by Strawhacker. And he's been in the middle of a lot of, a lot of those little things like that. Well, it, it's hard, Mark, for Dowling. They, you know, they're constantly trying to get back in this game and play at a frenetic pace, but offensively, they've got to slow it down a little bit. Now Brooks in the lane, a leaner off the glass and good contact made, and he, unbelievable shot by Deshaun Brooks. He is putting on a performance, Mark. I thought he got fouled there. 29 points for Brooks, and now a foul on Dowling's end. On the, Dowling's offense possession, foul will be on Brooks. That might just get him a, a breather. <laughs> might be this. Wow, and I, what a game this young man has played. Uh, Coach O'Connor going with Michael Keough for a little defensive purposes, I think, to try and help. Keyshawn Brooks with 29 points. Dowling led by Stillwell with 15 points and Riggs with 14 right now. Five and a half minutes remaining. Keough for three. Good! You're exactly right, Mike. you got to get him more looks. Keough with the second three of the night. And we've got a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves with 5.22 remaining fourth quarter. It's Ames 46, Dowling 43 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts of the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics, Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. And we're back here at the uh, Dowling Gym alongside Mike Swain. I'm Mark Amadil. Jeff Piggott is our studio producer. The first of three games this week here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Dowling and Ames right now, the boys' contest. Ames with the three-point lead, 46-43 over Dowling. 5-20 remaining. Full court pressure being applied by the Maroons as Ames tries to advance the basketball. They get the half court. Here's Cooper Downs. And he gets across within 10 seconds. Earlier tonight, the Dowling girls a winner over Ames, 78-57. Tomorrow night, it's Dowling and Waukee. We'll be on the air at 6 o'clock with a girl-boy doubleheader. Ames with the basketball. Trying to play a little game of keep away, but Dowling seems to be double-teaming the ball whenever they get an opportunity uh, here, Omaha Ballou is really making it tough for Keyshawn Brooks to catch, although that time he has it there. So here is Brooks with it. Keyshawn Brooks with 29 points. And a whistle and a foul on Omaha Ballou, who was guarding him. Blue with his second foul. Nobody in foul trouble really for Dowling. Blue, Daniel, and uh, Matt Stillwell, two fouls each. Yeah, Dowling with four team fouls, Mark, so a couple more fouls to give. Ames has five team fouls, and three of those by their starting center, Corey Phillips, who's back in there for the Little Cyclones. Here's Brooks with it. Nearly lost his feet, guarded by Omaha Blue between the circles. A near steal by Keel goes off the official. It'll be Ames basketball. Good hustle by Michael Keel. Michael Keogh with a near steal that time. Almost had it. So, so Downs, good at anticipating, Mark. And Downs will inbound the ball. Gets it to Brooks in the backcourt. Also in there, Jonas Strawhocker. 
Uh, here's Brooks coming off the screen by Straw Hacker. They spread him out, and we got a pushing foul on Dowling way beyond the arc. So uh, that, that's one you don't want to give. Yeah, fouls on Riggs. So on Ryan, got him for one. Yeah. That is his first. So little Cyclones went down the ball underneath their own basket. Leading by three. We've had no points scored since that timeout. Brooks in the lane. His shot no good. Might have been altered that time as Ballou and Daniel defended very well. Rebound Dowling. And here's Keel in the front court. Keel down the lane he goes. Gets in the corner to Ballou. Omaha for three. It's up off the back iron. No good. And a whistle and a foul on Riggs. Yeah, they're going to get Riggs on that. And that's going to be 16 fouls on Dowling. So on Riggs, his second. As you mentioned, team foul number six on Dowling. Ames with five team fouls. Timeouts remaining. Ames has one. Dowling with two. Now baseball pass all the way down to Brooks. His layup is up and blocked by Omaha Ballou. Rebound wow. Dowling and Keel. Coach Downs cannot believe that was not called a goaltend. Nobody called he, goaltend. Neither can the Ames fans. And now Keel in the lane. And he draws the foul. Reach in foul called on Straw Hacker. That's going to be six on Ames. So still not in the bonus. Ames fans upset. And I think Omaha timed it well. I, we had a, not the best angle, but we don't know whether the, he hit the ball and then it hit the backboard or did it hit the backboard and then he hit it. Well, either way, <laughs> give him a lot of credit for hustling down and making that play. Underneath Daniel, his shot no good. And rebound Ames, so the Maroons waste an empty possession. Oh. Right, and they, they have missed so many inside, just little ones like that. Ames won both meetings last year. Dowling's last win against Ames was at Ames back on December of 2017. A corner three wow. up and good by Jamison DeLisi, his second of the night. He's got six points. Just and a huge three. <laughs> Ames by six, and Ames back to their zone. Now here's Keel with it to Riggs, mid post, power dribble in the lane, layup up, and rolls through finally. Those have not been falling, and Riggs with 16 points. Wow. Plenty of time here for Dowling. And now they're going to get a foul. Whistle a backcourt foul on Dowling. Fouls on Stillwell. And that's where you'd like to see. If you're going to foul, foul when you cross the timeline. Yeah, Try to get a 10-second foul on the backcourt. I don't think Stillwell was trying to foul at that point. Uh, just unfortunate that he got a little shove. And now Strawhacker going to be at the line, shooting about 68% on the year mark. Three minutes remaining, 49-45, Ames by four. One and one coming up. The first one good. You mentioned Jonas Strawhacker, 6'3", senior. It's the first front end of a one and one. He's two for two tonight at the line. And he has second free throw, no good. And we got a whistle and a foul call. They're going to wave off the free throw. On Phillips, and that'll be his fourth well, as he got banged up or tied up with Riggs. I think that's going to be free throws for Ryan Riggs, which if you're Dowling, yep. well, you'd love to see the opportunity with the clock stop to yeah. go and get a couple free throws. So 11 points now for Straw Hacker. And now Ames with substitution as they'll bring in Craffill to replace Phillips, who's on the bench with four fouls. Three minutes remaining. Dowling trails by five, but one on one coming up for Riggs. First free throw up. Good. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Brian Riggs, who has 17 points tonight. 50 to 46. Ames. Little Cyclones with a record of five and five. Dowling's record eight and two. Second free throw off the back iron. No good. And a loose ball foul called on Blue. And they call Omaha. They say he pushed off, and he went straight up for the basketball, says wow. Mike O'Connor. So clock stopped, and now free throws the other way. And Ballou with his third foul. All right, the coaching staff for Dowling in disbelief on that call. Looked like Omaha Ballou just out-jumped Strawhacker, but the official got a with a body. So that's going to put Strawhacker at Back. the line for one-on-one. -on -one. And the first free throw is no good. Now, plenty of time here, Mark. Three minutes to go. Four-point deficit for Dowling. And the Maroons had the basketball. Here's Stillwell with it. Ames back to man-to-man. -to -man. Stillwell down the lane with the left hand. Layup no good. Rebound Riggs. He yanked it out of there inside the Stillwell. Matt looking for a seam in the lane. Shot is blocked by Craftville and a whistle and a foul on Ames. 
So Stillwell's shot was blocked, but he got fouled, and he'll go to the line. Craffel will pick up the foul, and on Patrick, that'll be his second. Wow, good work by the Dally Maroons, keeping that alive, Mark, to be able to get a second chance opportunity. Stillwell at the free throw line. Matt, 15 points tonight. This is a one and one, 18 foul on Ames. Free throw is no good. It's a two shot foul. Second one coming. 18 fouls on Dowling, eight on Ames. Timeouts remaining. Dowling with two, Ames with one. 244 remaining, fourth quarter. Second free throw good by Stillwell. Matt with 16 points. Ames facing full court pressure. And all the way down court, the pass and layup is good by Brooks. Great pass by Cooper Downs. Uh, wow. That's just good recognition by Brooks, seeing that nobody was deep, and he just took off, and nice pass by Downs. 31 points for Brooks. Underneath the blue, and a foul call before the shot by Omaha. A nice pass by Riggs. Let's see who they got. Straw Hacker, I believe, picked up his second foul, and he did. So free throws coming for Omaha Ballou. He'll go to the line. Yeah, this 50, is a one and one here, Mark. Yep, fifty-eight percent free throw shooter. Omaha's first free throw up, good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Omaha's first point of the night. Fifty-two forty-eight. Aims by four. Two minutes twenty-eight seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Second free throw off the back iron. Too strong, no good. Ball slapped around. Downs comes up with it for Ames. Uh, Dowling continuing to go one for two at the line. Marcus really hurt him here at the last several opportunities. Runes were four of eight at the line going into the fourth quarter. Ames two out of three at the line going into the fourth quarter. Still well guarding Brooks. Ames playing keep away. Downs dribbles baseline. Gets it over in the corner for three by DeLisi. Good. He can't miss. Jamison DeLisi with his ninth point. Six here in the fourth quarter. Ames' lead is seven. Two minutes remaining. Keel went with the basketball to Daniel. Drew on the baseline. Gets it out to Michael Keel. Right wing it goes to Stillwell for three. It's off the back iron. No good. Rebound Riggs. And a reverse pivot. Layup good. Right around Craftville. And Riggs scores his 19th point. Timeout on the floor. This will be a full timeout. We'll keep it here. Dowling. Trailing by five. It's Ames 55, Dowling 50 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Amadil alongside Mike Swain. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by r r Realty Group. Two Rivers Glass and Door, the Catholic Tuition Organization, and Mercy One. And Swimmer, Dowling trailing by five. And now the opportunity exists as the Maroons will have to come up with a steal. And... Uh, get to uh, find a way to score some points get this narrowed down to a one possession game well if you're looking at players to foul mark obviously you want to try and get a steal on the inbounds or a 10 second count once that ball crosses half court cooper downs is shooting 42 percent on the year uh from the free throw line and, and that's clearly the guy that uh Dally wants to foul coach o'connor was telling his players let him catch and then a foul right away. Problem is, Cooper's been the one throwing the baseball passes to Brooks. Yeah, you've got to let the you got to try and deny it. But then once he comes in bounds, let him catch, and then try and get the quick foul there. Uh, but Dowling doesn't have a lot of time here, Mark. To uh, again, you can try and get the steal here, trying to get a 10 second count. But then once it crosses half court, they've got a foul. All right, Downs will throw it in. The guy you want to foul is uh, throwing the ball in. The quarterback on the Ames football team inbounds the ball. Full court pressure by Dowling. Minute 46 remaining. Downs gets it in. Gets it to Straw Hacker. And now Ballou ties him up. And possession arrow favors Ames. So they'll have to do it all over again. But Ames will not be able to move on the baseline. Yeah. And it's a tough pass there, Mark. They're going to be sort of on the right in the corner there of the court, in the back court. So Dowling matching up. Downs throwing it in. Gets it into Brooks in the backcourt. Dribbling Ooh. around. Loses the basketball. Retrieves it across the timeline. Now finally stolen away by Stillwell, and he travels with the basketball. Matt had the steal, but uh, he was going down and uh, traveled. Wow, that was a great job by the Dowling defense to force that turnover. Just unlucky that Matt lost his footing. 55-50. Ames by five. Minute 35 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ames will inbound underneath their own basket. As Corey Phillips back in and a whistle and a foul on the Maroons. It'll be on Drew Daniel and Cooper Downs going to the line just like you thought. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, 
Dowling wanted. And so now you've got to just hope that Cooper, and he will be shooting one-on-one. -on -one. Cooper has not scored tonight. Yeah, came in averaging six points, four and a half rebounds, and four and a half assists. Misses the front of a one-on-one. -on -one. Rebound Dowling and Drew Daniel, minute yeah. and a half remaining. Here's Michael Keel with it. Lobs it inside to Riggs. Has the ball stolen away by Strayhacker. Strayhacker. Brooks with the steal, and he lays it in. Now tough that's, break. That is tough. Uh, Riggs just couldn't haul that in. Good job by the Ames defense, and then it led to a run out. Here's Keel with it to Stillwell. Dribbles in the lane. Leaves it for Ballou. Corner three up and off the rim. No good. Rebound Daniel. And Drew leaves it for Stillwell. His shot is no good. Draws the foul. Foul might be on Straw Hacker. Let's see. We're going to call it on him. Yep. And free throws coming. There'll be a double bonus now for Dowling. And two free throws the rest of the way. And shooting them right now will be Matt Stillwell. Who has 15 points tonight. First free throw, no good. Yeah, Dowling's continuing to struggle from the free throw line. Yes, they are. Stillwell with 16 points tonight. Second free throw coming. Good. 17 points for Matt. 57-51 Ames. Now another baseball pass all the way down to Brooks, and his layup is up with the left hand. Good. Another perfect Over pass the by Downs. Another perfect pass. 35 points for Kishan Brooks. And the Maroons cannot start stop the fly pattern. Daniel for three, and it's good. Drew Daniel with his sixth point of the night. A to me and Sons three-pointer. Cuts the Ames lead to five. So the Cyclones throw it in. Ball stolen away by Stillwell. His shot up and good. Stillwell with 19 points. And a timeout called by Dowling. I believe that is going to be Dowling's last timeout, Mark. With 30 seconds remaining, and this will be a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. 30 seconds remaining in the contest. Ames 59, Dowling 56 on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world online at Kemen.com. The home and away voice of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio. KWKY Des Moines, K233BT Des Moines, KIHS Adel. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. As uh, Dowling's got to get matched up here. Straw Hacker is deep. Nobody on him. Maroons has got to cover that fly pattern they've been yeah, running. Uh, I, Downs has got about seven touchdowns tonight. <laughs> yeah. Cooper Downs to Kashawn Brooks. Full court pressure by Dowling. Ames inbounds it to Brooks. And the ball nearly stolen away by Michael Keel, but a whistle and a foul on yeah, Keel. That's is, a good foul. You, they needed to foul, so. Uh, and, and they foul yeah. Delisi, yeah. who is a 63% free throw shooter. Well, Keel okay. with his first foul. And he's going to be shooting two. Yeah, both teams in the double bonus here, Mike. So every yeah. foul is a two-shot foul. Dowling with no timeouts now. Ames still with one remaining. Lisi misses the first free throw. He's got nine points. He'll get another. Free throws now. Their substitutions now as Ballou will check out. Riedel checks in. So Dowling will go with this lineup. Both point guards are in there. Keel and Stillwell. Drew Daniel, Ryan Riggs. One possession game here, Mark. Second free throw, no good. Rebound Dowling. <laughs> Ames by three, 20 seconds remaining. Zone. Ames stays 2-3 zone, maybe even a 3-2 zone. Oh, Here's Keel yeah, coming off a ball screen. Let's get in the corner to Riedel for three, to, for tying it. It's up and no good. And a rebound Ames and Phillips, and he's fouled in the backcourt. Boy, Riedel had a wide open look there. Just couldn't knock it down. Fouls on Stillwell. On, that'll be his fourth. Well, and now Phillips is going to go to the line, shooting 59% on the year, but no attempts tonight, Mark. I see that. Well, he's been in foul trouble. He has two points tonight, does uh, Phillips. And his two points came in that first quarter. First one up, good. Corey Phillips, 
The uh, 6'5 sophomore with his third point of the night. And now, Mark, this is a problem. It's a two-possession game, and even if Dowling scores, they can't stop the clock. Ames won't even have to inbound the ball. That's true. Second free throw good. Phillips with four points. Dowling with the basketball, trailing by five. Corner three by Keel. Good. Yep. They can't stop Ames, the clock, Ames and that'll do it. Just take it out. They can just hold it. Keel with nine points, and that'll do it. Ames has upset Dowling 61 56. Congratulations to the Little Cyclones. They were undermanned tonight with their leading score out for the year. And uh, Taman Lipsy, Casey Mum, and they brought it tonight. Deliberate game, 61-59 the final. Ames, the victory over Dowling. Well, we've mentioned several times, Mark, it was a it was a great game plan, but it was well executed by Ames. They did a great job of being very deliberate, but when they had the opportunities, a number of guys stepped up and knocked down big shots. You think about that, just yeah, a couple did. threes late in that game, like Delisi with that three in the corner, just a huge spot there. Other guys stepping up and making free throws or getting a, a rebound. Total team effort tonight by Ames, although, boy, when you look at Keyshawn Brooks, 35 points. Unbelievable. Uh, unstoppable tonight. Uh, he just was scoring from everywhere. And then how about Downs? People aren't going to look at the scoreboard and say, well, you know, uh, Cooper Downs, not a lot of points. He was. He probably had 10 assists on long passes alone, Mark. <laughs> so it was just a great job of him finding the open guy against that press. And uh, in the end, Ames shooting too much for Dowling. It certainly was. As uh, Ames a, a winner tonight over Dowling on the road. These two teams will meet later on in the season. Ames now moves to six and five on the season. They're now three and two in conference play. Dowling falls to eight and three. And the Maroons are now 4-2 and two in Central Conference play, and that sets up tomorrow night's showdown. Number one, Waukee, taking on number eight, Dowling, and that is as of right now as the Maroons lose tonight. And, uh, you know, that'll be a great matchup. They'll, they'll bring it, and so will the crowd. We'll have a great crowd here tomorrow night. But tonight it was all Ames, and they take it to Dowling here on the road. Well, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun. It'll be a, a great atmosphere. But Dowling right now going through a little stretch here, Mark, where – uh, they've got to try and and find a way to gut out a win, and it doesn't get any easier when you got the number one team in, in the state coming into your gym. But uh, they have been in games, slow starts. The last two games have really cost them, and and then free throw shooting has also been a problem the last two games. And those two factors have contributed to these losses. And now Dowling's got to dig deep and and try and grab a win against, you know, arguably the best team in the state coming in. Well, the Dowling girls are winner tonight, 78-57 over Ames, but it was the Ames boys upsetting number eight Dowling, 61-59, the final. Michael Keel's three-pointer uh, with five seconds remaining uh, closed the gap to two, but the Maroons could not call timeout. They were out of timeouts, and Ames let the clock run out without inbounding the ball. And that's our final. Ames 61, Dowling 59. We'll come back with the postgame show along with Mike Swain, Mark Hamadale. I want to thank our studio producer, Jeff Piggott, for all he does back at the Iowa Catholic Radio Studios. And we'll return to the Dowling Gym with our postgame show after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, creating commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. Also serving your home needs by creating custom frameless shower doors, mirrors, glass tabletops, and specialty glass. Two Rivers Glass and Door, design, fabrication, and installation. 515-222-4860. Online at tworiversglass.com. Two Rivers Glass and Door, serving imaginations since 1992. And welcome back to the postgame show here in Iowa Catholic Radio from the Dowling Gym. Ames boys defeat Dowling 61-59 in game two of our doubleheader, while the Dowling girls a winner tonight 78-57 in game one. 
Mark Amadale, Mike Swain, the first of three games this week. Tonight's game between Dowling and Ames was a makeup game from Friday night's uh, snow, uh, snowed out games in the CIML. And uh, tomorrow night, back to regular schedule. The Maroons now have caught up their uh, snow out dates. They'll be taking on Waukee tomorrow on a girls and boys doubleheader beginning at 6 o'clock. We'll go on the air with our pregame show. Uh, Steve Devenny will join me for the girls game. Mr. Swain, you'll join me for the boys game, Dowling and Waukee tomorrow. And then Friday night, it's Dowling and Johnson as we go back to Central Conference play. So a busy week and a tough loss for Dowling. Ames brought it tonight. They The game plan by Coach Downs, uh, you know, you, look, you talked about his son, Cooper. He had probably ten assists. He probably had three uh, touchdown or five touchdown passes be, between him and uh, Kashawn Brooks who uh, went over the top on Dowling's press and, uh, uh, you know, one possession game, uh, as, you, as, we, as we noted, and aims a two-point win on the road. Yeah, I thought they did a great job of executing the game plan and coming in. And, again, they, they were outmatched at certain positions. So they didn't have the hype. Uh, but uh, Coach Downs designed a, a game plan. And then, again, it was great execution. We talked about the night that Keyshawn Brooks had. I, I was really impressed with his shot selection, Mark. There was only, I thought, one shot where he sort of forced it. Uh, other than that, when, the, when he didn't have it, he was kicking the teammates, and then credit those teammates for stepping up and making big yes, shots. Did. So uh, just a, an all-around really great game played by Ames tonight. Uh, defensively and offensively, they came up with big moments. Dowling really got it going in the second half. I thought their defensive intensity when they came out from halftime to try and force Ames into some turnovers, I thought they did a great job on that. But there were some lapses, in particular the in against the full-court press, letting Keyshawn Brooks go over the top. That was tough. And then once they got him in the half court, they were there were some times where they trapped, allowed some three-pointers to be taken, and credit Ames for knocking him down. So um, overall, you got to give all the credit tonight to Ames. They played great. And uh, and now Dowling is, is forced with, you know, the reality of look, staring at, you know, a two-game losing streak. And, oh, by the way, you've got number one coming in tomorrow. Yeah, and that's the Waukee Warriors and uh, their undefeated streak. So, yeah, a lot on the table. Let's take a look at some of the numbers tonight, Mike, here in our postgame show. Again, the f- final score, Ames 61, Dowling 59. The Little Cyclones now uh, improved to 6-5 and five on the year, the 3-2 and two in Central Conference play. Dowling falls to 8-3, and three, and the Maroons have now uh, lost their last two games, losing uh, last Tuesday to Ankeny by four points here at Dowling and losing tonight by two. Maroons are 4-2 and two now in Central Conference play. And for Ames, they were led by, as we talked about, Keyshawn Brooks, 35 points. And I'll bet uh, Cooper Downs had uh, six of those uh, assists to Cooper to uh, Keyshawn, who is to our left, being interviewed by Ames Radio. 35 points for uh, Brooks, who came in averaging 14 and a half. Next up, uh, Jonas Strawhacker, 11 points to lead Ames. Nine points for Jamison DeLisi. And then four points off, uh, four points by Corey Phillips, who battled foul trouble, and uh, the post player for Ames, and Jay Rathy off the bench with two points. Uh, Cooper Downs, who uh, tossed all those touchdown passes or had all those assists, did not score tonight, but all those assists he had, I'll bet he's up to eight or nine assists. You mentioned Delisi. He had three threes, Mark, and each one of those threes felt like it was at a critical time where if he misses, maybe this game goes the other way. And instead, he knocked them down at just huge junctures. Yes, he did. And uh, he he, he got it to fall. So He had uh, one before the half, and he had two in the fourth quarter that uh, were were key threes in uh, Ames. So, all right, so uh, Brooks leads away for Ames with 35 points and uh, Strawhacker with 11 points. Ames went five out of ten at the free throw line. For Dowling, they had two players in double figures uh, led uh, led by – Matt Stillwell with 19 points and Ryan Riggs with 19 points. Nine points off the bench for Michael Keel, who had uh, three three-pointers, all in the second half for the Maroons. Six points for Drew Daniel on a pair of three-pointers and five points for Andrew Lynch. And Omaha Ballou with one point. Joe Strocko, Dowling point guard, starting point guard, did not score in tonight's game. And Matt Riedel did not score in tonight's game for the Maroons as Dowling went 8 of 15 at the free throw line and Ames 5 of 10 at the line. Yeah, the 8 for 15 sticks out. Uh, Matt Riedel going scoreless also sticks out, and he had a, a good look, Mark, at that end uh, in yes, the corner to, to try and tie that. You think about a couple of the, the shots that didn't fall for Ryan Riggs and Drew Daniel inside. Easy ones from about 3, 4 feet that just sort of rolled out uh, that 
they couldn't con- convert, and you wonder, you know, if that if those happen, uh, maybe this game goes the other way. But uh, again, uh, this was a game that Ames came in and won. Uh, they they deserve a lot of credit. They certainly did. Now Ames's uh, winning streak now against Dowling is now three, as they won both games last year, home and away, and and then they win the first meeting this year. These two teams will meet uh, later on in February up at the Ames Gym, and we'll have that game on Iowa Catholic Radio. I think it's one of the games that uh, you are not available for, and that'll be, uh, Mike, and that'll be on uh, huh, Valentine's Day, Friday, February 14th, the rematch, Dowling and Ames, and uh, we'll see how that turns. Right now, Dowling has lost three in a row to Ames, as Ames takes an 8-7 lead in the series that uh, we date back to the 2007 season. So a uh, fun game, fun game to watch. Uh, tough for the Maroons to come away with the loss, but uh, – there's walk key tomorrow night. The good news is Dowling's not going to have a lot of time to think about this loss. Exactly. They've got to turn around tomorrow and bring their A game. And, Mark, uh, a slow start tomorrow against Waukee is not going to get it done. No, it will not. They have got to get uh, off to a better start than the last two games that they have played against Ankeny and Ames. And it's going to be a great crowd, a great atmosphere tomorrow night. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so are we. So am I. And looking forward to that. In the girls' game, it was won by Dowling uh, over Ames, 78-57. Maroons were led by uh, Caitlin Clark, 42 points. She knocked down seven three-pointers. And the Dowling girls now have won four in a row over Ames in their series as Dowling leads that series 13-3, to dating back to 2007 season. So, that's the scores tonight. We'll take one final break and return to the Dowling Gym along with Mike Swain. I'm Mark Amadale. Again, the final in the boys' contest. It was uh, the Ames Little Cyclones defeating Dowling 61-59 here at the Dowling Gym. Back for final comments after these messages here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, r r Realty Group, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. r r Realty Group is an Iowa commercial real estate owner and developer that provides services for all commercial real estate needs, including brokerage, interior space planning, real estate management, construction, and more. r r Realty Group has been accommodating business expansions and real estate solutions since 1985, solving commercial real estate needs. r r Realty Group, establishing long-term relationships built on trust. Thank you to Tumi and Sons for your support of Dowling Catholic High School basketball. Tumi and Sons is an Italian family restaurant with old country authentic Italian food. Enjoy the local atmosphere where you may even spot a priest, politician, or even Willie Farrell. Take advantage of Tumi and Sons bocce ball court with the kids while enjoying Tumi's homemade bread, pasta, and real Italian homemade desserts. Tumi and Sons is located on Southeast First Street, just south of downtown Des Moines, and around the corner from Graziano Brothers. 515-282-7976. TumiandSons.net. Welcome back to the Dowling Gym for the final time tonight as uh, Dowling and Ames split a doubleheader. Dowling girls winning 78-57 in game one, and and the Ames boys upsetting Dowling 61-59 in our final game. So, Mike, we move to game two of a three-game week as Dowling and Waukee tomorrow night. Keep that chair warm. We'll be back in it tomorrow as uh, here at the Dowling Gym, and I think we're going to have a a few more fans in tonight. Not that the weather kept everybody away, but – a, two, a Monday night and a Tuesday night games don't uh, fare well as far as crowd, but tomorrow night will. Dowling and Waukee meeting the only time during the regular season. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Obviously, Waukee's the real deal. Uh, state tournament team from last year, and they are currently undefeated and number one in cl- uh, Class 4A. So should be a, a, a big test for Dowling. And, again, we mentioned it earlier tonight, Mark, Dowling's got to get off to a good start and c- keep this crowd into it. Uh, if they have any chance to, to pull off the upset. No, no question about that. Mike, thanks for sitting in tonight. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds great, Mark. My broadcast partner, Mike Swain, want to thank him, and Steve Devenny, who sat in for uh, with me during the girls' game. And, again, during that uh, girls' contest, Dowling winning game one uh, by the score of 78-57 over Ames. Maroons were led by Caitlin Clark's 42 points, and she knocked down seven three-pointers. Ames was uh, led by Carolyn Waite. Caroline with uh, 22 points. She knocked down five three-pointers. Ashley Iams with 20, 20 points uh, also to lead Ames. So the Dowling girls now move their record to 11-2. and two. They're now 5-1 and one on the season as the Ames Little Cyclones fall to 6-6 six and six on the season and 2-3 and three in conference play on the girls' side. In the boys' game, it was Ames 61, Dowling 59. Maroons were led by Ryan Riggs and Matt Stilwell with 19 points each. For Ames, they were led by Kishan Brooks. Kishan with uh, 35 points by the 6'1 junior. And uh, Jonas Strawhacker finishing with 11. As the uh, Little Cyclones now improve their record to 6-5 and five in boys play. 3-2 and two overall. Dowling drops to 
uh, their record now eight and three and four and two in Central Conference play. And that'll wrap things up from the Dowling Gym tonight. As we uh, want to thank our uh, supporters and underwriters of Iowa Catholic Radio, they include Kemen, Dental Associates, Construction Professionals, Ashworth Vision Clinic, and of course uh, our good friends at R and R Realty Group, Catholic Tuition Organization. Two Rivers Glass and Door and Mercy One. And our thanks to uh, to me and Sons for sponsoring our three-point made baskets by the Maroons all season long. And that will wrap up our show for tonight and our both games here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Our student producer is Jeff Pickett. I want to thank uh, the folks from Dowling, Athletic Director Tom Wilson, Mary Pick, Michael Connor in the Athletic Office, and, of course, the Dowling President, Dr. Dan Ryan, for all they do for Iowa Catholic Radio. The Executive Director of Iowa Catholic Radio is Tony Calumet. And I'd like to thank Ames Athletic Director Judge Johnson and his staff, Dustin Rhodes, and all those folks that help us prepare for the game, including head coaches uh, Joel Sullivan, the Ames girls coach, and boys coach Vance Downs. Our next broadcast will be tomorrow night right here on Iowa Catholic Radio as it's the number five Waukee girls and the number one Waukee boys taking on Dowling. We'll be on the air at 6 o'clock tomorrow night, so join us for the pregame show. Tip off the girls game scheduled for 6.15, the boys at 7.45. So join us tomorrow right here on Iowa Catholic Radio. For my broadcast partner, Steve Devenny and Mike Swain, this is Mark Amadale. Thank you for tuning in here on 1150 AM, 88.5 and 94.5 FM, and streaming online. All our games are streamed online at iowacatholicradio.com. And, again, the finals once again. Dallin Girls a winner tonight, 78-57 over Ames. And the Ames boys upend number eight Dowling in the boys' contest, 61-59 here at the Dowling Gym. For our studio producer, Jeff Piggott, I'm Mark Amadale. Thanks for tuning in. Until tomorrow night, have a safe and blessed faith-filled evening. Our coverage of Dowling Catholic High School basketball is underwritten by Ashworth Vision Clinic, the Catholic Tuition Organization, Construction Professionals, Dental Associates, Kemen, R&R Realty Group, Mercy One, Two Rivers Glass and Door, and Tamiya and Sons. Please support the businesses that underwrite Iowa Catholic Radio on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, streaming at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. The proceeding has been a Dowling Catholic Sports presentation on Iowa Catholic Radio.